Welcome to the One Up Podcast. I am your host, El Caballo. Here with some of my co hosts, <laughs> Mateo, <laughs> Pucho, and Doughboy. How y'all boys doing this weekend? I'm doing good, I'm man. Good. Um, I've got uh, I've got power, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, nope. that's right. You're going through that Texas dilemma, huh? Oh, but it's just about done. It was nine degrees like three days ago. Now it's seventy degrees outside, and everyone's walking around wearing shorts. That's insane. Been it's been crazy, dude. It's been absolutely nuts. Uh, I am tired of snow. Tired of melting snow. <laughs> oh, that's tired, right. You got to um, melt snow to shower. That's fucking crazy. Oh yeah, dude. It's been nothing but sink showers. Like this, this is the most disgusting that I've ever been in my life. Is uh, not having water and not having power for like half a week. <laughs> that's oh, fucking shit. terrible. Yeah, I've seen so many trucks just like spun out, stuck in ditches, spinning wheels. Uh, you know, lots of people think they have big old trucks they can just drive in the snow, but uh, not quite. Not quite this. Not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine if it snowed in Florida because these fucks can't drive in like light showers. Imagine mm-hmm. snow. Yeah, that's something that you always have to consider. If these places have never seen snow before or if it's been like 40, 50 years, like they're not going to be able to handle that shit. There's no, no but, infrastructure for it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like we don't have any snow plows here. I think we ran out of uh, sand and uh salt like the first day of the snowstorm and it snowed for just about three or four days yeah the crazy Uh, shit too is that it's not only that they haven't seen snow before is that like even the times or it's been a long time since it snowed not only has it been a long time it's just never snowed like this where it's just like a fucking blizzard snow lying around for days at a time people gotta still go to work or do this like i don't know it's crazy yeah seeing Seeing snow last for more than like a few hours is rare enough in Texas. Seeing uh, eight, in- I think it was eight inches of snow that we got in my area, unheard of. Crazy, it's crazy stuff. Eight inches, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, what do you know about eight inches, Tony? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not- uh, Simple let's, question. Let's see. Let's see though. Uh, I, this week I made ramen on top of tea lights. Um, I used hand sanitizer to cook food. I put it in like little uh, little jars, and then cooked like on top of that on pans and whatnot. Uh, so thank you, COVID, for giving me a big old gallon jug yeah, of like, hand sanitizer. You got like MacGyvered it out, like. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, like found some duct tape in my car and sealed up like all the windows and the fireplace and whatnot because there was a com- bunch of cold air coming in. I think at one point in my apartment it was about thirty eight degrees, forty degrees inside. Oh man! You know how to scary. make a fire? Uh, I've got a fireplace, but I don't know the last time it was uh, actually like maintenance. But I'm saying, do you so, know how to make a fire though? Like in general, yeah, yeah. without a yeah, lighter a or lighter fluid, just straight. Fucking. Oh, you mean you mean like a survival situation? Yeah, I've uh, seen people I've, do it, but I've never I've, done. I've, it. I've seen videos of it. I've used like a, one of those like magnesium starter kits before, but I've never like had a situation where I actually had to do that. <laughs> Funny, they lost power. They still have gas. They have lighters. They have matches. I'm just saying. Like, yeah, this isn't all, like a fucking all, no, no. caveman situation. I'm just trying to, to teach people. Two sticks together. This, I'm just trying to teach power. people. Maybe, you know, I don't know what he has in his house. If he's, uh, you know, fucking knows anything about survival, like surviving. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? The fuck? I, I guarantee if I leave Doughboy in the fucking woods, he wouldn't know how to start a fucking fire. Guarantee it. I bet my left he nut have, on it. I just told you I don't. Exactly know. my point. He would 100% have a lighter on him, though. No. <laughs> yes, I will. If I, bro, I can be bet like, my. Light it up, bro. I'll be that one dude to break your fucking lighter and tell you to go figure it out. Now, I will tell you, though, there are two things that I would like in my life right now. A shower? And they're ridiculous things that I ever thought that like would be like this important. But I want a hot ass shower. I want the hottest shower imaginable. I fucking hate hot showers. I want the hottest shower imaginable. And I would like to be able to flush my toilet as many times as I want without having to melt snow and fill it back up. Oh my god. <laughs> Why don't you just take a shit outside? Yeah, that's that's a good solution. <laughs> Dig a hole, take a shit. You're fertilizing Only- the land. 
What? You would die in a survival situation. I don't know. Me? You're giving the worst fucking advice. I, I, everybody here, I would be the only one to survive. That's what I would have said before you started talking today. But this isn't. He has a he has a toilet that works. If he pours water into it, it will. No, but he's it. saying That's he's how... tired of pouring. I was like, yo, then I'm giving him solutions to shit that he's tired of. Go take a shit outside. Yeah. It's called an outhouse. <laughs> Niggas like, know what an outhouse like is. Said, He's if it's like if he said, yeah, you know, I'm fucking tired of having to work to pay bills. He's like, no, just just go and be homeless, you know. Then you don't got to pay no bills no more. It's like that's fucking good advice, right? It's a solution, I guess. It's a solution, technically, yeah. It's technically a fucking a solution. solution. Look at this guy, number one. Oh, oh no, oh. I don't know. Oh, he thought about it, yeah, and he don't really got to pee. No, no, <laughs> man. So. Did anybody? Well, that's a dumb question. Wandavision. Well, I'm 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 assuming everybody here watched the la- latest episode. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I did want to ask Mateo something because there was oh. a conversation that came up, and it's related to this whole Texas situation. So a lot of people right now seem to be super pissed off at Ted Cruz, right? Mm-hmm. So there was sorry, there's Ted Cruz, and then there's this other like congressman or mayor, or I don't know. That other guy, a hundred percent. He deserves all the fucking shit that he's receiving. He tweeted some stupid ass shit. But which was um, um the gist of it was basically like your elected officials don't owe you anything. You don't deserve any money or any help during a crisis. You need to fend for yourselves. It's live or die or something along <laughs> those lines. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we we got a lot of we got a lot of shitty politicians down here, dude. Y'all need to go uh, vote, man. Fuck- Fuck Ted Cruz. Fuck Rick Perry. Fuck Gre- uh, Governor Greg Abbott. Fuck all of them. Uh, especially Rick Perry. Holy shit. Uh, did you see the shit that Rick Perry was like? Texans would rather be freezing to death in the cold than to have the feds come in and regulate our power grid. That's how much we we value small government. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I know the fucking Rick Perry wasn't out of power for a goddamn week like me. <laughs> I mean, it's just like really... Texas showing its ass. Like, if anybody wants to know where to hit Texas now, it's just their power grid is shit. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so terrible. Like, I don't know. I don't understand what the benefit is for Texans to receive non-federalized power, but it's fucking electricity, bro. Everyone needs it at this point. There's like, like, if you want, if they rely on the federal government for power. Then the federal government could take it away from them, and they could regulate. That's a big yeah. thing. But no, where has that happened? Like, what do you mean? Like, well, sure, I'm happened? giving you what the conservative argument would be. Yeah, because so like, the, go ahead. Like the conservative argument on this is: look at all this money that we saved these power companies because they didn't have to follow federal regulations for winterization and infrastructure updates. <laughs> and then this happens, and the what failures because of their lack of winterization and infrastructure That's updates. What I'm saying. It's only bringing it up to date, wouldn't it be like that's basically what they're gonna do? Yes, but then but, you have to live under the thumb of the man mm-hmm. and the uh, people in power ha, that uh, run these companies make a little bit less money. And then the conservative argument would be that the money that they save passes down to us, the consumer, because they love that trickle down economics shit where they just piss on our face. It's becoming yeah. a political podcast this time, guys. <laughs> take, that, take that money. The only way but, shit uh, would change is if, if it affects these rich motherfuckers. If they didn't mm-hmm. have power, if they didn't have water, oh, yeah, we need help ASAP. No, no, yeah, I bet. That's the only time shit would change when the people with the bread gets the fucking, like, the bullshit, too. Or they run down to Cancun. Just, you right. know, escort their kids down there. Yeah, those memes are kind of funny. They're so fucking good, dude. <laughs> it, 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 it was like, oh, father of children crosses border to find better life for him and his children or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will tell you all about some cool things that happened, though. Uh, I met a bunch of my neighbors. We all came together. We, like, got our tools together. We cleared out the walkway of ice and snow. We cleared out the parking lot as much as we could. Uh, we had a barter system going on in our little community here, my little condo complex. Uh, this woman gave me a pack of cigarettes traded some cigarettes for some firewood that I ended up not using. Uh, I tr- gave someone some alcohol because I had 
so much extra alcohol. Like there, there, there was just this whole community coming together and just handing out stuff. It's like some uh, there was follow. a dude. There was a dude going around two days ago just with like these big like five gallon gallons of water and just like handing those out and be like, hey, if you need these, and just knocking on doors and just giving people water. That's so super nice, man. That's kind of cool. Like there's some exciting shit. I mean, like the trucks that got stuck out in the snow. You'd see random people just run off off the streets or like out of their cars and just go and help them like push their their trucks like through the snow and get them out, you know, moving again. So that's a real sense of community. That's nice. It's yeah, kind of so, sad, though. Right? Like it's it kind of requires a dire situation in order for people to just like be neighborly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like uh, it's like uh, I mean, they are family members COVID. that you only ever see whenever there's a funeral, right? <laughs> It reminds me a little bit of that. It's like bonding and tragedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. It's fucking depressing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I was mainly curious um, about everybody shitting on Ted Cruz, right? Because the way that the way that they the way they're spinning the story, the way Ted Cruz and 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 the the people who agree with the things he's done. The way they're spinning the story is like, oh, he left the country to 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 uh, help his children, get his children to safety, and then he he was coming right back, right. Um, so a lot of people are pissed off that he left. I'm curious though, because like I I'm not fully, I don't fully understand the anger towards like someone like leaving for right, like how he did. So like, and I'm. I don't know. I've heard some people give me some arguments that I didn't really find convincing. So I'm I'm just curious, like, like if say you had the means to not the means and the money to not be in Texas right now, like if you could just like go to somewhere else and you know there wasn't COVID because that's like a whole other thing, right? That like, even if you could, you probably wouldn't because you don't want to be around people. But like if you could just go to like some hotel, a couple like a state over and chill and work there, like is that so wrong? Like, it uh it, it depends. A big part of the Ted Cruz thing was uh he's he's a hypocrite. Uh he shit all over some mayor in California. I think it was in California during the wildfires or power out. There was some there was some similar situation in California and he shit all over some politician there because they did the exact thing. They left they left the state because there was a crisis going on and like t- like th- there's there's a lot of animosity towards K- Ted Cruz in general. I mean like the man is just it's almost as bad as Trump, where you can just find a tweet for everything where he will contradict himself. And Ted, like the big one that was floating around was like back in like 2012 or 2016, Ted Cruz uh, tweeted, I will believe in climate change when, when Texas freezes over. <laughs> so everyone's just retweeting that Came tweet at Biden him right him. now. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't it? Only a few years. How long did it take him? Only a few years. Um, but uh, my my favorite one from a comedian that I like, Zach Fox. He said, <laughs> he said, why does why does Ted Cruz always look like he just got titty fucked? Because <laughs> he makes <laughs> he makes these faces like he's just got. I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> they there posted a, a titty fuck face. I've never heard of this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like it. <laughs> it's funny. I gotta show y'all this week. But yeah, that was right. my favorite one. So I guess yeah, I could I could understand that perspective then. Like, um, yeah, Grant, basically he's like a hypocrite. So like, fuck that guy. I'm not defending him. I don't like him at all. I was just mainly curious about all the 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 vitriol that I'm seeing the internet throw his way. Although optically, I understand it looks bad when somebody who's in a position of power gets to have the luxury to not have to experience all the bullshit that all the rest of us have to experience. I understand optically that looks wrong, but I guess I was mainly curious, like logically or like morally, is he actually doing something wrong? Like but... that's, and, and I mean, yeah, that's that's fair. And I mean, it's kind of like the uh, there's a there's a cop thing. There's like a, a cop discussion that's similar, where like uh, a lot of cops police in neighborhoods they don't actually live in, like they police in areas they're not actually from. And it's how how invested are you in that community if you're not actually going through the same strife is that community right that. yeah right that, i wouldn't want to be a cop that. and work in a fucking lake worth like what the not hell you that. like think wait, about wait, that wait. go ahead there's also a a um a tax situation where the money that the most 
the people who make in inner cities it's a worse it's worse than like big inner cities uh because all that tax money is going out of the city and back into the suburbs because that's where all the people who live the cops the fire the firefighters all these business people they live in the outer boroughs and they work in the inner city so none of the funding goes to any of the inner city uh like issues hmm no but back to the whole cop shit like most of the cops don't live in their area i mean like if i was a cop right i wouldn't want to live in lake worth and police lake worth because half the motherfuckers you got problems with once you arrest them and shit they're more likely to come by and fuck with your house or or you know what i'm saying fuck with your family or something like it's just i right. wouldn't want to i know so, but it sounds like you're saying hey i want to because i'm a cop and i'm going to mistreat people in the city that's not I what i said. live in that same city because people are going to try to you know, no, get revenge that, on me. It's not it, what I said. Or, it is an interesting view on policing that your immediate go-to of what a police does is arrest people. No, the, the I didn't even say the word arrest. You guys are wilding right now. I'm saying when you, when, when so issues you come up. someone, when, they're going to try to get revenge on you, basically. So let's say I give people mad tickets because they're breaking the law, Right. Okay, they find out, oh, this motherfucker lives right down here. I'm going to egg his house or I'm going to fuck something up. Like, this is like why I don't like I don't want to live where I please. Right. Simple so as like that. in the it's, past, has most nothing. of the most of the cops lived in the neighborhoods that they used to police. Right. Yeah. And um, r- relations inner relations between police officers and the people that lived in those communities were much better. A lot of that had to do with the fact that. The cops ain't going to go and just fuck their neighbor up and beat his ass because he has to live next to the guy. So mm-hmm. he has to consider that when he's dealing with people. It, 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 nobody is the other anymore. It's, and also, you, you know, like now if somebody robs my house or, or somebody vandalizes my property, I, 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 my neighbor's a cop. I could trust that cop because, because that cop that's here, he treats our neighbors good. So like now that's someone I could trust. You're the just, relations used to be much better for reasons like that. Now that people get to, like Doe was saying, you get to live in one city, go to another city and work over there. You don't give a fuck about nobody over there. The only thing you do there is work. Who's you to, to say go that, back though? Home and, I'm sorry, what? Who's to say that no one gets, like that, that cop doesn't give a fuck about anybody else? And you don't have to, is what I'm saying. You no, have no, no obligation to treating those people fairly. Whereas if you live there... And you treated people unfairly, everybody on your block is going to be like, yo, that guy's a piece of shit. And they're probably going to try to get your ass fired. Like you said, they probably will egg your house and they will treat you like shit because you're treating people like shit. So that's a form so, of the the people policing the police officers. Yeah, so it's a, so, it's, a so, it's a social pact, basically. So the cop does his job, right? Doesn't attack people, doesn't harass people, just does his fucking job. You're saying that the people are going to accept him, but like, okay, yeah, he lives there. He's cool. He gave me a ticket because I did this. Or no, that's not how that works. Not like just like not every cop has that good mentality and don't take the power to his head. It's not every fucking person you pull over is going to have that same mentality too. Like if you're you pull over your neighbor, you give him a ticket, and be like, oh, this motherfucker gave me a ticket, and you can be the nicest cop. You could have no beef with anybody, but it's like they're gonna because they know you. They're gonna automatically assume, yo, let me let me just get by. I was like, nah, bro, you ate the red light. I'm giving you a ticket. It's simple as that. Like, just cause I just cause you're my neighbor, like, bro, you broke the fucking like. If y'all wanna, yeah. if y'all wanna hold niggas by the law, right? Like, yo, you're speeding. I'm gonna give you a no. ticket, bro. Just cause I know you, I'm not gonna give you a ticket. No, Nobody's bitch. Saying that. Nobody's saying that. What what we're saying is that cop gives that guy a ticket, right? And now that guy's pissed. He goes to egg the cop's house. The other people that live in that neighborhood now get to ostracize that guy who harassed the cop because everybody knows the cop's a good person. So not only are the people defending the cop in the situation where he's doing good things, they're going to ostracize the cop in situations where they do bad things. The person who lives in the city and polices that city has every incentive to treat the citizens of that city with fairness, respect, care, as police officers should. So as it's somebody not, else who lives out. It's not 100% guaranteed, but it, it, it's, it gives a greater likelihood of it happening. Um, also, side note, when the fuck is the last time that you actually egged someone's house? I haven't done that shit since <laughs> I was 18 years it was old. Just an ex- <laughs> it was just an example. <laughs> I mean, I like, I could, Tony does it every time he gets a ticket. He finds <laughs> a cop. 
goes, goes to, to Catfinder, house. Catfinder.com. He puts in the bag. He gets finds a copy. Goes over there, buys a carton of eggs, and he eggs. <laughs> That's a very specific thing. <laughs> it's just crazy that you guys have this mentality that all cops are bad or or. Or only cops in it. No, that's that's how it sounded like. Like you're saying, because you're Pucha, you're already coming off saying, oh, if the cops not in the inner city, he's more than likely not to be it. He's going. It's going to be more likely to be a dick. No, you can say that for both ways. Inner city cops can be dicks. Outer city cops can be a dick. It's just a person. Like you can't make one blanket statement for all outer city cops. Like that shit is stupid. To care. I think I think you misunderstood what I said. I didn't say that no. inner city cops are dicks and the people that are not in the inner cities are dicks. I'm saying. If a cop lives in the same town, city, county that he's policing, he's going to treat, and on average, he's going to treat those people better than if he worked in another county or city. Mm. That's all I'm saying. It has nothing to do with whether you live in an inner, it's inner probably city. Probably a higher percentage, maybe, but that's. And the people are going to have more respect for the police officers that live in their town. Because now, when I see a cop, He's just a cop. I, I have no relations to that guy. If the cop lived in my neighborhood, though, I'm going to, the same cop that's policing the neighborhood, I'm going to view that guy differently. Like, because now he's not just the bad guy who gives me tickets or, or protects the neighborhood and things like that. Like, yo, he's also like my neighbor, Joe, or whatever. And I've gotten to know him and I know he's a decent person. Um, I think that type of stuff fosters better relationships with police officers. Like, as an example, right? My uncle used to work at a prison back in the day, right? And he used to carry a gun on him. And he lived in the hood with us, right? Everybody in the hood respected the shit out of this guy. They used to look at him like he's a cop who lived in the neighborhood, who worked in the neighborhood and all that. And everybody will see him. Everybody will have mad respect. People will be, there'll be people smoking weed or doing this or doing that. And when he was walking down, everybody cleaned up, came super correct, did their greetings, treated the man with respect. He went into his building after he got off of work, like, People would go to him when they had troubles, like, yo, so, so-and-so so did this or did that. They would give him scoops on shit. Like, shit like that, it don't happen no more. Everybody looks at police officers like, I don't want nothing to do with them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of situations, but... Yeah. It's like, uh, what's the show you like, Tony? The, uh, the Snowfall, right? The cop lives in his neighborhood. You see how much he cares about his neighborhood? Yeah. It's like that. To a certain extent. Well, it, to a certain extent. I mean, it's not a guaranteed. It's just, it, it's, it's an increased likelihood that you'll give a shit if you're policing there. You, you, you're, you're living it. Because that cop has to respect people because he lives right. there. Now, yeah. that's so you take that same that's, cop that's goes, out of there. It goes both ways. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. It, like, if you take him out of there, is he going to, like, is he going to respect? How about that cop that lives there? Does, when he goes to another city, does he respect? Like, no, nah, it depends on the fucking person. That's all I'm saying. Like, it just, you can't I say. You understand. I understand <laughs> exactly what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, a person out of, like, fucking Felix's brother's a cop. That nigga right. literally works in Miami or whatever, right? Right. Like, he's, he's going to be the same guy whether he fucking works in Miami or works over here and lives opposite. Like, it's going to be the same guy because that's just how he is as a person. I don't think Okay. You're telling me, like, at work, right? If you had to work side by side with your manager, or if your manager had, or if you had the opportunity to be totally free without your manager looking over you, would you think you would have the same behavior? It's no. Nah, it's a no. I don't know about that. It's, it's not even a question. There, that's it. That's but, that's my and what predicament though? Like, we, like, we what get like getting an drunk? additional manager of these police officers now by being around them, they need to behave better and treat people with more respect. And and you're not wrong. There may be cops that would treat everybody with the same level of respect, regardless of where they work. It's totally plausible, right? It's just we're talking likelihoods here. This is why body cams, things like that, are important because it becomes a tool. It should be a tool in which the people have control over seeing, yo, look at look at this video. We get to see cops are treating people poorly. Mm-hmm. Shit, right now, there's a lot of cases where police officers, you got people that are lying about cops and they use the footage to to even defend themselves. So like it, it just it just it, it's these tools that we could use to police the police are also used in their benefit as well, mm-hmm. where they could defend themselves as well. 
as yep. well as um in New York. I just read recently that just like last this week, they voted to against the um what is it called? The union, the police union didn't want they wanted the police's um when they get written up and whatever like incidents they have they that was always kept private and now that we can actually look into a a cop's history and like what he's been accused of and stuff like that which is like huge you said the the police union voted in favor of that no no they were voting against it but like they i think it went up in in the supreme court or something like that and now we have access to all those files and yeah that's dope yeah that's that's the problem with unions man like we all look at unions as like good things but they do a lot of bad shit too yeah like because their primary goal is to defend their workers right which sounds good but i thought yeah definitely um yeah well i mean it it becomes complicated when the worker that is being defended is someone that is potentially responsible for another person's life and well-being and safety <laughs> yeah i think I in mean, all other situations they could be better but yeah in that sense it has to be you know like we should know if a person has a history of doing these things and stuff like that no for sure for sure it's just yeah i mean it goes against um it makes a union's job harder to do right which is to make keep make sure that the people that are in their union get to keep their jobs basically yeah. it's like their primary goal and and then of course that they keep their wages and like I'm mean, sure you work in buildings right so you know the buildings that have unions it's like people gotta get written up like seventeen times before they even have a single meeting and then they need to have ten meetings in order to be considered for a penalty and then they need to get eight penalties before they could be uh, get a trial before, to see if maybe they could get terminated and then it's like it, 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 there's all these roadblocks to protect the worker and in general we are the workers so it sounds good but it's like then sometimes you get shitty co-workers that don't do their job that you need to cover for and there's no way to uh, yeah. to get that person out of there or change or anything like that because the the union's there to defend that so well, it's like it's kind of a shitty situation what was like that my cousin tutu <laughs> my that's his nickname is tutu um he got fired from a building and his union was fighting the building for like why he got fired it was like a real it's like a bs reason and they were fighting it and it took like two and a half years why they fired him i don't i don't really know like the specifics but i know it wasn't good enough for the union standards of like so they fought it in court for him and he got in it took a while it was like two and a half years so when he won, he not only got his job back, but he got all that pay retroactive. Nice. It's like he got all the money back from all those checks that he missed out from the day he got fired. So like those, that's why I guess it's the most sought after job uh, for like a person without a career, like going to school and stuff like that. It's like the easiest thing here in New York that you can enter and like, the benefits you get are great. It's like also going into the MTA, sanitation. There's like these jobs in New York that you can get that like, if you do that shit for 15 years, you'll be very well off with the amount of money that you're making. It's like livable wages. No, for sure. Yeah, I got family. I got a family member that got a job at the MTA a couple years ago. And not only is it like a chill job, you know, he's like, yeah, I just got to put in a couple more years. I'm going to get this pension. I'm about to get paid for life. Like, shit like that. That is like, them city jobs still have a lot of benefits. Like, and then the unions only add shit on top of that. So. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. So, has did anybody watch WandaVision? I, I did not watch Friday Night's, this most recent one that came out. But I need you guys to fill me in. We gotta start a poll on if Doughboy is gonna watch it or not every fucking I, week. Listen, it was uh, it was I I didn't have enough time. I had a small window this morning to watch it, and I uh, squandered that that moment. 
Though he put Cat on. I heard the Cat watched WandaVision. She's she's going to uh-huh. discuss this with us. Cat uh, yeah. has some stuff to say about the revelation regarding Sparky, okay? I'm so <laughs> upset. I didn't get to see it. Like, it doesn't matter either. I can watch it right after this. I won't have any input to put in until next week. I mean, we, we didn't talk about last week's episode, so we, 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 we got some shit to discuss still. So. Yes, still. All right, well. Start off, though, boy, with last week's episode. I'm going to pass it right back to Tony. Oh, bathroom break numero uno. Yo, this oh, man is the five. fucking worst, yo. I don't watch it, and I'm going to take a piss. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so, yeah, last week's episode. Mateo had a theory that regarding Agnes that I was fully bought into. And then in the previous episode, not the one that just aired on Friday, but the one before that. They did it. They threw I, you off. <laughs> it threw me off big time in a way that I didn't like. It, it wasn't too convincing. Like now with the latest stuff, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not super convinced. Like, well, obviously it's obvious, but I feel like the choices and the way that they displayed it, I wasn't digging it. It's, like, a, it's a little bit goofy with the latest episode's revelation that she is potentially the mastermind behind this whole thing. Why was she out at that street? Like, why was she out in the mid, like the edge of the neighborhood, just driving in her car for no reason? Yeah, right. weird. Even, shit. even um, it's it's so bizarre because it's like Vision was like Vision was sort of exploring um, Westview to. <laughs> I guess find get more data, more clues, information about what he's living in, you know, what is this place sort of thing, right? And then mm-hmm. he goes all the way out to the edge of, of, of the hex and Agnes is there. And they have a super brief encounter that didn't seem to have any significance. And then he left the hex. And then, so to your point, what was the purpose of her being there? What is her being there? add to anything maybe she's how, watching them yeah yeah like confirmation how did she know how did she know that he was going to be wandering out in fucking middle of nowhere westview like find her at that exact spot there's so much coincidence and and it's 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 a superhero show right so like coincidence is kind of like part of it but i don't know man give me give us a little bit of a little bit of believability in our nonsense i love how she doesn't have that much control of the people who are far away from her is pretty much only in her immediate vision and like her immediate i guess bubble of so like i don't know there's like bubbles to her big bubble and i don't know i feel like um and the further she goes out but i don't know what she just did at the end of that episode because it seems like her bubble just became a whole lot bigger well she she strengthened it like because a Vision was out, so to save that nigger, she had to fucking expand it even more. And mm-hmm. then I guess now too, those outer bubbles will not be more inner, and maybe they'll be more controlled now as it expands. Like I mean, her strength is growing. Yeah, almost like yeah. a radio signal. It just you know it gets weaker towards the end of where it can reach, but it's stronger in the center. So. What do we what do we got as far as theories though? Is uh Quicksilver her brother? Yeah, for sure. Somebody but, for okay, sure. But like but the the current one that's that's there in the in the world being played by Evan Peters from the X-Men universe. Is that actually her brother? Or I don't is think so. it something else? I what, like uh an, an illusion being controlled by Agnes or uh, there's still lots of theories that Mephisto is the one that's actually behind all this. That He did ask her when they were sitting down and he's like, what is all of this? How did you even do this? And she says, I don't know. I don't remember. He's asking very, very probing questions and he's not doesn't appear to be under the same kind of mind control as some of the other nope. characters. He's it looks like he came in from the outside. Right. Also, also, I was I was re-watching some of the older episodes. Uh, because when I still had power, I was like, well, 
the hell else am I going to do besides rewatch some shit? Um, there's a lot of references to the devil in this show. There's a lot of casual references to the devil in this show. Uh, I think Agnes herself drops at least two or three lines where she's like, well, you know, the devil's in the details and blah, 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 like just various things like that. Mephisto is the devil in the Marvel universe. And I think Mephisto is heavily involved in that whole House of M storyline from what I've read about it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's... The only so, Mephisto uh, I know is the Mephisto from South Park. South Park. <laughs> <laughs> the four-assed monkey. <laughs> That's the man of Doughboys right there. <laughs> it is a Mephisto. I mean, um, so do we, we got to give Doughy a quick catch up on yeah, this yeah. latest I, episode since he doesn't got it? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. But it'll be nice. Yeah. We'll, it's so, unique. Right. So basically, um, at the end of the previous episode, Wanda expands the hex to some larger area What's the now girl's name that's chained up to the car darcy darcy yeah, yeah. she's I, I, also I, in thor you're right you're there. right i just saw a clip of that the other day and she was in that movie too i didn't even realize it was the same that she was playing the same character i love how uh do, do pulled out his uh ultimate um he he has this thing that he does often where like if there's even more than one instance of any given thing, he'll just claim it's everything. So like if we're playing like Overwatch and there's like two enemies are coming in through the side door, he's like, they're all coming in through the side door. Yeah, that shit is work. That is all shift attention to the side door. And we killed the only the two guys that are there. And then the other four guys who are actually coming in through the front door, they kill us. And he's like, well, I thought, I, I thought it was everyone. And then you're like, God damn it, though. <laughs> so he does this shit all the time. And so then I thought it was hilarious how he saw Cat Dennings in 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 a uh, Wandavision, right, as Darcy, and then Cat Dennings was, um, I believe, Natalie Portman's friend in uh, in in Thor. Thor. That sounds and right. He's like, he's like, oh my god, her assistant. The, the the doctor lady from from WandaVision is actually in Thor. She's she's in every Marvel movie. I'm like, <laughs> she's not. She's in one Marvel movie and one Marvel TV show. It's like in every Marvel movie. I'm like, That's <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> but yeah, she's chained up. Mm -hmm. They expand the X, so now she ends up in there, right? And um. Basically, she's now mind controlled. She's like working in this carnival. Vision finds her immediately. Yeah. Vision finds her immediately, breaks her mind control, and then they just start driving around Westview trying to get Vision back home, pretty much. Just driving back to the house. That's all they're doing the whole episode. That's it. A hundred percent. That's all they do the entire episode. It's super it, pointless. It's it's real goofy too because like at at the end of it, he remembers he can fly, and he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> wait, wait. So then maybe something happened to him when he started to break apart. Well, his his mind is all kinds of broken. Like he's he yeah. doesn't remember who he is. Oh yeah, she explains everything that happened to him. Like she explains like the whole like you died and then you came back and then Thanos was the thing and then like. She, she explains like his whole history to him, basically. Wow. Yeah, and then this, this, as they're this. driving back to, um, as they're driving back to the house, they keep running into obstacles along the way. It starts raining. They get hit with every single red light along the way. Fuck, I hate a that. Construction appears in front of them. Literally empty street. As soon as they hit the gas, a construction crew just walks right up, blocks off the road, and they just start doing like all this starts happening. And he's pondering. He's like, man, Wanda really doesn't want me to get back to the house. Like, she's really stopping me from getting there. Like, that's kind of weird, right? Um, meanwhile, the... I forgot her name, but Dawn from Mad Men. Don, Don Draper's assistant, Dawn. The, she was black on the show. Oh, Monica. Uh, Monica, there you go. She, um, she gets back into the hex. And 
manages to gain superpowers while running in, which I thought was kind of cool because in this universe, there are no mutants, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. in the sense like X-Men, right? And again, if this is them trying to blend these two universes together, like the Marvel universe with the Fox universe, it's interesting that they've mentioned a few times that going in and out of the hex is actually changing your DNA. Because when she gets through, it, she just sort of gains superpowers. Like you see it kind of happen immediately. And now I'd like to think like she's going to be, aside from Quicksilver and actually Wanda, because they are X-Men characters. But at least in this universe, they haven't really explained like mutants. I'd like to think that Monica might be like the first real mutant because her powers have gotten mutated by running through the hex. Um, I thought it was pretty cool the way that they showed her, like being able to see like electrical fields and like, yeah. they showed her little like vision when she first popped through. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was super cool. Um, and so, yeah. And then all you really got to care about is Wanda is having a tough time. Her powers are not functioning. Yeah, her powers are malfunctioning. So her powers, and that might be just the hex got bigger. And now in order to use her power on this whole bigger area, it seems like she's losing control of even the things that are close to her. Yeah. So little pieces of the town, like a street light or a lamp or a table are like just snapping to like different time periods. It's like a sixties table, then a nineties table, then like a, like a modern looking lamp, then like an old lamp. She like pours mm-hmm. some milk out of like a milk, like, like a glass um jo- what the fuck mason my jar words are, uh, my words are gone but yeah a, 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 a glass uh jug of milk and it literally transports to like a carton of milk then back to like a jug and um all that shit is happening i think her powers are just getting weakened is this next episode in early 2000s yeah they're going for like the reality tv thing so she's talking to an interviewer like she's being interviewed yeah it's like straight up like um like real world or road rules or those fucking garbage shows that we all watch don't want love those shows bro (laughs) yeah i miss those shows those shows were really good were they (laughs) so fucking terrible up for for challenges real world road rules challenge or something it was terrible (laughs) <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm not into reality tv anymore but when, it, when it first came out it seemed like we were all on that shit um, me and emily be watching these fucking um i think it's the love it or no love it or list it it's about yeah. a, like a couple that helps people either rebuild their house or they go and find a new house or whatever and we'd just be sitting there and just watching it. And I'd be like, I just love open concepts. It's like one day open concepts just came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, like my first half of my life, I didn't even know what an open concept was. And then all of a sudden now, like the last four years, open concept is like, yeah, I need an open concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, I get it. Because I do like that big roomy feeling from the kitchen to the living room. When, you know what I mean? It's like, those, I don't know. Those TV shows are married people porn, dude. Like that is that's that's the porn yeah. that you guys watch, and you're like, ooh, we could look, we could get have an island in the kitchen. I get excited <laughs> going to Home Depot sometimes. I be like, yeah, I'm going to Home Depot, so, boys. Have you seen the South Park skit on that? No, I don't think Randy I have. Marsh and his wife run a. Uh, they have a TV show. It's white people renovating houses. That's literally their fucking <laughs> show. And it, he keeps going into people's houses. He's like, yeah, you know, we're gonna tear this wall down and do this. Open you know, concept. get an open concept. He just keeps saying open concept. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the first thing he we're gonna put the an book. island right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny, bro. What we're gonna do is knock your living room wall down and <laughs> and and have your kitchen and your living room for an open concept. <laughs> it's it's funny too because in that show like it kind of explains a lot of shit like like in the house they have, there's beams that like run across and it stabilizes you know the fucking house and it's just like when you tore when you tear down one wall like this person had to spend like over 30 racks to get like three pieces of beams because they wanted an open concept in the kitchen <laughs> i'm like damn so they're about to spend 30 racks on like three pieces of beams just to have an open concept like to me that shit blew my mind i'm like damn yo these it was, it was like a like a nine hundred thousand dollar house so it was just like whatever these people got bread but it's, to me it was just like fuck bro that's crazy 
Me and Lisi right now are in the middle of talking to contractors to see if we can knock down our living room wall to open up our kitchen. So it's actually kind of funny. That's terrible. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna I have to get wait. Why? And yeah. you're also gonna have to do whatever electrical sockets are on that wall too, right? You're gonna have to make sure you put them somewhere else. Yeah, we already got a quote. It's gonna be uh, they they quoted us ten grand to get like. Uh, new countertops they're gonna knock the wall down but but, but where's the tv uh, gonna go what was that yeah that's the whole other bitch you're gonna so put it in the second to, living room i'm trying to figure out like i'm not using that other living room man so i'm trying to figure out how i could still basically move my my tv from the wall it's on now to the opposite wall to see depending on how the space is so i'm gonna try to get like a floor plan to see if that's something i want to do actually that and then we're work. also gonna lose like our cabinets at the top so we're gonna have to find new solutions for how we're storing our plates. There's a whole bunch of problems that, that a whole bunch of little problems to to, to solve. Just to like, our, our, it's just our kitchen is very claustrophobic. It's like really closed in. So it's, and it's small too. So it's just like having it open. I think it's gonna feel nicer to be in there. Um, so all you're gonna yeah. do is just move your couches, and your couch will be that wall that is now gone. So that open concept that you wanted will be replaced with couches. What? Like that wall where the TV's at now, um, and we just went into this shit into, about him and his house now. But that wall where your TV's at, you get rid of that wall. You're gonna put a fucking island there because that's what you're going to do. But no, no, you- no, because I already have countertop there and my sink is there. So it's basically we're just knocking the wall down to create like a window into the kitchen, pretty much. And I shouldn't call it a window because it's that whole side that like the there's a whole countertop. That's a countertop, sink, and a more countertop. That is all going to be just like a big ass island, so to speak. Um, Ew. And then we might put some bar stools there so we can sit there, talk shit, have some drinks. Shit's you nice. know, it's nice because then I could go and cook something in the kitchen and still fuck with people. You know that that are like chilling here when it'll COVID's be, over. It'll be good for hosting, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Uh-huh. we're looking at solutions to our claustrophobic kitchen. So. And in other words, though. Going back to what I was talking about, more importantly than than white people renovating houses, WandaVision, right? Um, <laughs> so Agnes, you know who Agnes is, though? Yeah, that's her best friend Neighbor. in the show. Yeah. <laughs> she comes <laughs> over and she's like, yo, let me take care of the twins. Like, you're kind of having a rough day, right? She's like, perfect. So the she, the she takes the twins. And then Monica shows up at the house now. And um, they have a little back and forth. Monica tries to tell Wanda, like, yo, your powers are kind of out of control, but we need to figure this out. This other guy's trying to kill you. All this shit. They also mentioned that the military, the the general guy, he was trying to use Vision's body as a weapon. Yep. Like, really? And so he also wasn't going to respect Vision's wishes of just they, letting him be dead. They do, they do this. And they kind of hinted that maybe that's why Wanda came and took the body back. They do the classic superhero thing of they meet for the first time as superpowered people and they fight a little bit. Mm-hmm. Monica Monica nails the superhero landing. Nice. She landed. That or not. She got through the hex. Boom. She landed <laughs> like that. And then again, then when when she pulls up to Wanda's house, Wanda tries to like uh, like lifts her into the air to like slam her down to the ground, effectively trying to kill her. <laughs> like um Again, boom, she lands in the superhero pose, right? She's uh, down on one, one knee, fist on the ground. She, you saw like some energy looking, blue energy. She got super sharp blue eyes now. Mm-hmm. Monica, so yeah, and yeah. Then Agnes is like, oh, don't worry. Just blah, blah, blah. She comes and gets Wanda and, and they kind of curve at Monica. Then they go back to, to Agnes's crib, right? And then Agnes is all like, they're just chatting. And Wanda's like, yo, where's the twins? And she's like, oh, they're down in the basement. They're, they're down in the basement playing. And then fucking sinister music starts playing. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then you, the, uh, Monica, go, um, Wanda goes downstairs. And on the way down, there's like fucking all these trees and vines growing on the walls. And you're like, mm-hmm. what kind of fucking basement is this? And then um, in classic horror movie fashion, right, the you know, the white woman just walks right into to more danger. And I'm like, you got superpowers. Like, just light the fucking room. 
But <laughs> no, she don't think about it. She just walks into pitch black. I'm like, I'm getting my black ass out of there. I'm gonna get shot or killed or stabbed or murdered down here. I ain't got no business down in this basement. Like zero. I business. fucking get out, turn the hex off, TV shows out. I'm done with this bullshit. I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> No, they always put themselves in situations and shit, yo. Ucho Vision would be a much shorter show. That's a fact. <laughs> if my dead brother came back to life, I'm like, nope, I'm done. Something's <laughs> fucked up. We're act this shit up, boys. We're out of here. Like, <laughs> the Ucho Vision show, the credits are play, will be done. Everybody be pissed. There's no fucking resolution. <laughs> but, uh, then she goes down there, and it looks like there's a bunch of doorways. Maybe portals to like some other play. It, that's what it gave me vibes of. It looked like a hub world in an RPG where you got like all these little portals to take you to different worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were all turned off. So it didn't look like you could see other worlds. It just looked like these um, fantasy like doorways, sort of, so to speak. And then Agnes came down and like the room started lighting up purple and she seemed to have some powers. And she basically says that she's been behind this the whole time. And then they give you a bunch of like um, flashbacks of like a bunch of like bullshit that's happened that you thought was weird or wrong. And then she's sort of there in the background, snapping her fingers, like kind of creating mischief. Yeah, she's sort of like a a mythical Loki, like she's creating mayhem everywhere she's going. They play the goofiest song ever while while they're doing all these flashbacks too. Just and like at the end of the song, she's like, "And I killed Sparky too." Yeah, it was weird, she bro. Killed, like she killed the dog. Like, I don't understand. Like terrible. maybe she is the devil, and and like that, and like you know what I mean. He just camouflaged it as her to just be there, fucking around. I think. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's a trick. I think it's to throw us off the big reveal. Uh, just from the stuff that I've read on the comics, like she's sometimes butts heads with Wanda, but she's usually portrayed as like a uh, a sympathetic character if not an ally to Wanda mm-hmm. so it'd be weird for them to just completely redo her storyline it wouldn't be unheard of do you guys uh, I feel like Wanda uh, killed her in one of the comics too though I think she did I think yeah. you're right like so and and I think she taught Wanda how to use her powers so uh-huh. like she's like a teacher like a mother kind of figure for Wanda mm-hmm. so like I don't know I'm with you it, there's uh, there's a conf- there's some conflict there where like she could either be a really good character like a good to Wanda right not a, or a bad to Wanda right so I'm I'm not I'm not sure what they're going for there um I don't know the re- like the reveal of her being the the mastermind behind this the whole time it's like it's kind of a cool twist but it's also like all right I'm still waiting for the the the, the other shit one. to drop like for me that wasn't the big reveal I don't know I didn't feel like I don't yep. know. Uh, it was also the first episode with an after credits teaser, which was interesting. Yeah. I wonder yeah, how many episodes um, are left. Like, cause, uh, like, is, does anybody really know? Because I mean, it's just like, I'm curious to how they're going to end this first season of I was, fucking. I was under the vibes that the next episode is the last one. I didn't get those vibes. What 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 vibe led you to that? Uh, just stuff that I've read over the months. Oh, oh uh, off the, the comics? The vibes of the show have... Get, I, haven't, um, I haven't looked at the episode count or anything. I'm not positive, honestly. Because, I mean, that last episode, I was just like, all right. And then I started thinking to myself, like, wait How a minute. How many episodes is The Mandalorian? Ten? Ten? Oh, I ten. Oh, so one, ten. I, ten I just read one of it and it had nine episodes. Oh, my God. So See, this is what I'm saying. Like, like, how the fuck are they going to end this shit? One thing I well, wanted to talk about... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was just going to say, like, the way they would end it is... Um, Super cliffhanger. They would have to, you got a, a reveal that's supposed to be a big reveal episode. I think next episode is going to be the real big reveal to introduce, like, the real problem, and then they're going to sort of come to some kind of resolution in episode nine. Again, I'm, I'm in the firm belief that they're going to try to merge some kind of universes or something i don't know maybe wanda's hex expands to encompass the whole world and it's just like well, everybody's terrible. now living in an alternate reality or some ramifications like that like maybe it does expand to take over the whole world and then it goes away completely but then they also mention that everybody who goes through the hex 
their DNA changes. So now everybody's DNA is changing. Maybe that's the way they're going to bring in like the X-Men mutants or something that everybody's DNA just got mutated and some people got power. Some, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, again, like Mateo said, I think too much like comic books though. So I'm sure none of these like cool ideas that I think are cool in my head will, will actually happen. So. What was your question though? We'll I wanted to talk about the Halloween episode that the commercial for that episode. That shit was creepy. Which when one was that one? The, oh, the shark. On the island, and they give him, oh, hey, you got, it was like a Danimals commercial, but the kid, for some reason, could not get the thing. Yo, that was so creepy. They just closed in, and he just couldn't get it, and he spent the, his entire, he died. He turned into a Man, skeleton. that's a good call out, though, because that, that, that commercial basically implies that something is feeding on her magic. Uh, because there was some stupid tagline for that snack, like the snack that snacks back on you, or this, uh, this will snack up your magic, or some some something stupid like that. Um, so there's something feeding on her magic. Is it, is it Agnes? Is it is it Mephisto? Is it something else? Like, I think I think there's a lot of uh, foreshadowing in those commercials. Yeah, I was. Um, there was a two commercials this episode, and I couldn't make sense of either of them beyond just some surface level stuff like in this episode wanda was very depressed then they had the like a commercial about like depression medication and mm -hmm. aside from the comedy in that like um ad it didn't seem like there was much significance like i was trying to even pay attention to i was looking at all the character like the faces of the characters that showed up i was looking around them to see like is there any symbols and things like that that are appearing i didn't notice a single thing I mean, my oh. perception is did you catch the uh the title screen uh thing when it was doing the title for the the for what the the new wandavision you know there's a new song and dance every every episode I didn't know. Uh, it was doing like it was doing like it was flashing it was like different like versions of the name wanda like it had her like her name with like fridge magnets and like a restaurant called wanda and like all doing that whole like intro thing yeah. uh one of them uh, like the letters look like a ransom note and there's like a few frames where it like flashes and shows like the full thing it says, I know what you were doing, Wanda. <laughs> no way. Damn, I must have missed that. What the fuck? What was that in the middle or there towards the end? It was right at the beginning, right when it's doing oh, the little, like fuck. the Wanda song. Yeah, I missed that. I have to go back and watch that. Yeah, they, they definitely packed these episodes with a lot of like little Easter eggs and background stuff. I think I started it and I went to the kitchen to grab something to drink. And I think that second right there, boom, fucking. <laughs> I had me too many drinks last night. And while I was watching the show, I was getting a little drowsy. So I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, hit pause. I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. So I'm, I was uh, yeah, halfway. You're a better man. I would have tried to fight that shit. Well, well, you're, definitely that? you're definitely disappointing David because he was really like, on top of watching last week's episode and you're over here falling asleep drunk halfway through this week's episode. <laughs> Apollo's going crazy. <laughs> no. But now nah, I was saying that you're a better man, Pooch, because I want to try to fight that shit out drowsy as fuck. Like, I can't, I can't do this again. Yeah, bro. I would, in, no, in most circumstances, I absolutely just fight through my sleepiness until it defeats me. Um... But I actually care about the the show, and I kind of yeah. want to pay attention. So I was just like, "Oh fuck it, I'm gonna actually just watch it while I'm a uh, sober and clear mind." So. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Is this is this show going to feed into uh, the the next one? What is the next one? Uh, the Winter Soldier one, right? I don't think yeah, Felix so. Felix is super hyped about that one. Felix is hype about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh... Oh man, it's two characters, right? It's the new Captain America and Winter Soldier. I forgot. Yeah, Fal Captain Falcon. America. Yeah, the yeah, Winter yeah. Soldier, the Falcon, or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, should be cool. I'm not super fond of either character, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Fake ass Captain America and his boy. Uh, Fake why, why, why ass Captain America. Captain America. I, like, I don't know. I, feel I like just like real ass Captain America, man. Nah. America's built off the backs of. Of oh, uh, shit, black and go. brown people, so I, I feel like it's super fitting that that we get a person of color in the role of Captain. No, I'm America. not saying anything like that. I just, oh okay, I'm not putting race in it. Like people who put race in it, just beyond me. But 
I'm t- I'm saying like like that's it. like I I didn't like the way they just off that man. You know what I mean? Like I I feel like yeah they off them by like they off them like he went to they said oh he wants to just go live his life. He did that fucking travel shit and lived his life and he happily died with the woman that he loved or got old right. So to me I was just like damn like see you know Captain America is one of those he was an honorable person. One of the one of the most honorable person, like you know what I mean. Like he fought some of his fellow fucking superheroes to like based off of fucking like loyalty and what you know is the way to do shit. So, but He's a conservative, you know, he fought <laughs> against uh, Tony Stark's big government ways. You know, he wanted to Ooh, fight the man. <laughs> the power of the superheroes in the in the hands of the people. You know, the small small government is what he wanted. You know. Yeah, so I don't so know. He's super, super conservative in a sense. He's not my favorite character, but at the same time, I kind of respect him, like Captain America. Like, I fucking, you know, I fucking love Captain America. Yeah, you love him more he's than me. My favorite but... one out of the cinematic universe. Really? Oh. I think so. I think so. Hammer Bruce, Hammer Bruce Banner. Ah, Bruce is. All I right. mean, Spider Man's always been my favorite character. So, although I'm not a huge fan of the Tom Holland Spider Man. I kind of like no, the Tom think... Holland Spider Man. I I think he's better than Toby and Andrew. Toby sucks. He's by far the best Spider Man that I've seen on in the movie screen. My issue with Tom Holland and Spider Man is the Spider Man I grew up with is the one of the most genius, um, clever characters that that I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like he'll he'll think up a solution to any problem. He'll, he always gets his ass kicked and he learns some lesson from that and he figures out how to overcome his issues. And I feel like Tom Holland just gets bailed out all the time by Tony Stark. So it's like he doesn't embody my favorite aspect of Spider-Man, which is just like, you know, trying to figure that shit out. out his problems. You know what I mean? He's never been the strongest character. Like his, his power has always been in how he could apply clever thinking to, to problems. I mean, it, it feels shitty that like, like um, all the awesome things that, that that he gets just seems to come from Tony Stark, and then like all the times he's gonna fail, he just gets bailed out by Tony. So it, it's it, to me, it's just like oh man, like all these opportunities to make like a really cool Spider-Man character. It's like you got one of the better versions because his movies are, in my opinion, better than the other ones. But I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of I have mixed feelings. All right, he's my favorite, and you know I got. Because he's my favorite, I got some strong opinions about him. You know? What if he rebranded himself as the Night Monkey and just started using his own technology completely? The Night Monkey. <laughs> you don't re- you don't remember that from Far From Home? They, they, they uh, like he was wearing that all black outfit, and they like all the newspapers were like the Night Monkey saves the day. <laughs> the fuck! I did not remember that. <laughs> oh man! I think I he, uh, yeah, I think they were calling him the Night Monkey or something when he was in that all black like Spider Man outfit at the. Uh, Right. Over there in uh, France or wherever the hell they were at in that in that movie. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I thought that movie was cool too. I, I enjoyed it. The Far From Home. I thought mm-hmm. it was dope. That one was great. Um, um, Although Vulture, uh, fucking Michael Keaton is Vulture, probably one of the, my favorite supervillains oh. in like Marvel Cinematic Universe. Really? For sure. Yeah. Dude, he Vul- was so not really Vulture cool. His Vulture was really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um. And I, dude, the fucking twist was so freaking good. But when when he's he's going to to he goes to Mary Jane's. Is her name even Mary Jane? Did they ever call her Mary Jane? I know no, they just say call, MJ. They call her MJ. Yeah. Right. I don't know. He goes to MJ's house to go pick her up and take her to prom, and then she's like, "All right, you got to meet my dad." And in in walks the villain he's been fighting the whole movie, and it's like, oh shit! Yeah, that was. Epic. And then they gotta like they gotta like play nice with each other, um, you know, on the car ride. And I don't, know, I, I thought it was like a super super cool twist that was completely unnecessary, and it just made the movie better. So I'm so, still saying that, that cool. at all that Spider Man shit, Venom's the best character out of all that shit. Yeah, Venom's my favorite villain in Spider Man. My um, favorite. All time, like I can't wait for Venom Two to drop. Yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> I'm on my Doughboy shit. That shit is mine. Fucking not. Nah, yeah. I have to take it back to Nazis as usual. But oh. that is why I like Captain America. 
Because he fought the Nazis. Just triumphantly standing on a pile of, of Nazis that got their ass kicked. I don't know. It's hard for me not to like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Just to, to take it back to, you know, we Spider Man is a tangent. I love Spider Man. I'll talk about him all day. I just want to tell you why I like Captain America. Oh, man. I, I went back and watched uh, uh, Captain America the First Avenger recently. And yeah, ju- just the story of Captain America in the where he's like the skinny, <laughs> scrawny dude with that weird little like CGI uh, Chris yeah. Evans. Uh, which one is it? Chris Evans? Chris, yeah, yeah, Chris Evans. The weird Chris Evans face and that tiny, skinny little body. Uh, like the, the the flagpole scene where they're like, first person to bring me this flag gets to ride back in the car. And like they're all <laughs> the dumbass are trying to climb. It just pulls it down, hands him the flag, jumps in the car. Just his, his, his whole his whole like origin in the movies is just fantastic i forget i don't know how much it differs from his comic book origins i know that there's still the super like the secret super soldier serum and all that shit yeah. but i don't remember if he was like a scrawny little like weakling basically Who, Captain that got America? Chosen because of his heart yeah i'm sure in some version of captain america it's really close the one i'm familiar with i don't think that he's necessarily like like unfit for the military, but then he gets chosen into this program or whatever. But I do remember him being like scrawny and all of that, and then getting the super serum and then becoming captain. Gotcha. I thought it was um oh man, it just oh right because of Chris Evans, right? Uh, do you do you think they're gonna redo Fantastic Four? They or, need to because because he was the original Human Torch in the in the original um, uh, Fantastic Four movies. So, um, the rumor is that, uh, what is it, Reed Richards, right? Is, it's Richard, yeah. Reed Richards, right? Oh, Not Richard Reeds. I forget I which way it goes. Reed. I think it's I think Richard it's... Reeds. I gotta look this up. It's a problem when you got two last names. It's Reed Richards. <laughs> he got a last name as a first that's the, name. That's the dumbest way for it to be, but whatever. So, Reed Richards, uh, the rumor is that uh, he's going to pop up in... WandaVision, that he's the, the oh, aerospace okay. engineer or whatever that they want, that she was waiting on. What? And that the actor that's going to play Reed Richards is John Krasinski. No way. Which I think is a fantastic choice. It's a weird choice. I, I like th- John Krasinski. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on board with it, but I can't picture him as Mr. Fantastic. Um, I, I could see it, because Mr. Fantastic I, I, is kind of an asshole. Like He's kind of full of himself. He's kind of Shitty. <laughs> is Jessica Alba John still gonna Krasinski be? Can pull off original? that kind of like wry humor kind of character. Is Jessica Alba still gonna be the Invisible Woman? I'd be very surprised if she is. Yeah, I like, I don't know. I had a thing for Jessica Alba back in the days when she was Dark Angel. I had a thing for her. Uh, that bitch right there. I used to love. Just, I used to watch Dark Julia, Angel she, just to she watch was her. A girlfriend who went to another school, Tony. Who? <laughs> I don't know what this nigga talking about, but. <laughs> She was definitely you know the thing when you know kids say, "Oh, I got a girlfriend," and they go, "Oh, who's where, who's your girlfriend?" She goes to another school. She you know, moved like to Canada. Yeah, <laughs> she moved to Canada. Nah, but she was definitely one. Like I was just like, I don't know why everybody says she's a dick or a bitch in real life. I'm like, I've never heard of this. Like, she looks Wait, fine you don't to know me. why you were attracted to her in Dark Angel, where she wears leather the entire time and rides a fucking motorcycle with her ass out. You have Ow. no idea why you're attracted to her. Straight tangas, <laughs> <laughs> pervy kid growing up. That's every that's every young boy uh, they, growing um, up, man. They've they've already rebranded the Fantastic yeah. Four. There's a new Fantastic Four that's worse than the original already. Mm-hmm. And they had, I don't remember who Johnny who um uh Johnny Storm like Human Torch, right? I don't know who who Johnny Storm or his sister was in that movie. Like who the actors were. I'm pretty sure they had the kid, the guy from from War Dogs and Whiplash. I forgot his name is escaping me right now. Who? Um, you, you, me, and you were just talking about the movie War Dogs the other day. Remember? Me and you? Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking um. God, Lee, what's his something fucking... Teller? Something yeah. Teller. His last name's Teller for sure. But he's he's the main character, not Jonah Hill. Yeah, guy. yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm not, not Jonah Hill, anyway, the other one. I can picture him. I, he, I have no idea. What character from the Flash, uh, he played a boxer. He played a Vinnie Paz in a, in a mm. another movie. 
Dude's a great fucking actor. I'm pretty sure he was Mr. Fantastic in the recent um, incarnation that they made of Fantastic Four. And then they had Michael B. Jordan as, as Johnny Storm. I remember or Johnny, that. Yeah. And I just said I don't remember who it was. It just came back to me. Damn. And I'm like, dude, two really good fucking actors. Michael B. And, Jordan? Uh, yeah, Wallace from The Wire. Yeah, no. Nah. So, who the f- so who's going to be the new Black Panther? What? He True. died. I know, but Michael B. Jordan was the, like he didn't get killed. Like niggas, people were saying like, "Oh, he can come back and be." Michael B. Jordan did not play Black Panther. <laughs> no, he did not play Black. Pa- Am I talking about the same gonna, fucking guy? He's gonna take. You said he's gonna. No, no, no. Take he was in Black Panther. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he was Black Panther. I'm saying that he was like the the villain of Black Panther. Like he came in trying to take his rights to the throne. I'm saying like. I thought they, since he didn't die, I, th- I heard something saying that he was going to come back and replace Black Panther. He was going to be the next Panther. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Marvel's going to do some weird shit with that. Uh, like, there's rumors that Shuri might take up the Black Panther man- mantle. Damn. Um, I don't know. It's it's going to be complicated though. Like, there's there's going to be some weird shit. Like, Just, like they've already said they're not going to recast him and they're not going to do a CGI. Uh, like Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. All right, Peter Chad. They man. filmed something to kind of like explain bridge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like they did. I they they went overkill in the Star Wars movies. With, oh, they, oh, they did. Gosh. They did Carrie Fisher dirty, dude. <laughs> no did way. They? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. That that last footage in like the last movie of like them like cutting together a conversation to kind of make it fit into the movie. It's unnecessary. <laughs> that last conversation between her and Daisy, like that's basically like, I don't know. It comes off like Princess Leia is having a stroke, and she's not even having the same conversation <laughs> that Daisy's trying to have with her. <laughs> that's fucking. I think it was that bad, but um, yeah. I hope they don't. I hope they don't. I hope they don't go that route where they, you know, he's been he's dead. They make a whole movie with her. And then put her in the next movie after that, and it's like, it's like, oh man, it's a bit much, you know. Mm-hmm. And then then she popped out in the rogue in the on the rogue. I was almost said rogue legacy, awesome indie game, but no, the rogue one movie. Um, they put a scene in there with, uh, with her too. Just she was totally CGI in that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. they went crazy with CGI because was it they had Grand Moff Tarkin? Grand Moff Tarkin. Too. Yep. Completely CGI. Which I'm glad they did. It's fucking Target's badass. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in in who, who how they're gonna do uh, Black Panther. And I'd be super happy if if um, Michael B. Jordan somehow comes back because I I loved the, I loved Killmonger as a character. In my opinion, best him and Michael Keaton are probably the best Marvel villains. I don't mm-hmm. think any any villains and. Marvel has done villains really bad, in my opinion, and 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 beyond like Killmonger, um, Vulture, and then now with um, fucking the Endgame guy, Jesus Thanos. They're like literally the the best villains, in my opinion. Um, beyond that, it's like I, like Red Skull was okay, but then they totally took him out like at, in that position, so he's like not a villain anymore. And then, like, what you got the, the 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 one random guy from fucking Winter Soldier, Ronan uh, like, the future. Yeah, Iron Monger, the first Iron Man movie was pretty cool. I I like the the Iron Monger character. I I forgot the the general guy's name, but I thought it was cool. Man, um, yeah, Iron Man has definitely had the worst of all the villains, though, for sure. Do you think? Like, yeah, fucking. Who's the fucking whip guy? Oh, I could, I can't remember. All I remember I'm trying to remember his name. I can't remember yeah, the fucking yeah. name. That was the it second movie. Yeah. Trash. And then it was, um, they recast from the second to third movie. That it was, first it was, um, I am mine. I am Terrence Howard was in the second. He was oh. the warhead. <laughs> he was Come warhead. On. Come on, he, he was war machine. War machine. Yeah, I think I said warhead. Yeah, I'm not a and uh, 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 of uh, of Terrence Howard. So Come when on, they recapped it to a much better Don Cheadle, I was like, oh, okay, I'm cool with this. This is a, a better look. Okay, because mm-hmm. yeah, so, he wanted yeah. more money. Apparently, Terrence Howard. You know, you know, Ultron was a good villain, actually. Yeah, I think, it was cool. I, I think James Spader's creepy little voice like 
with the little robot sound effects. Ultron was Ultron was great. He, he just said the weirdest shit. I feel like James Spader just went off script constantly in that role and just said weird shit. They're like, I, and then he walked out of the recording studio and they're like, well, fuck, I guess that's what we're using then. <laughs> I, I didn't really like Avengers 2, though. Uh, like, and I like, I like Ultron, actually. He was actually pretty cool. And I, I do like that they took the Jarvis character, the Ultron character, merged them together, and you get um, Vision. So they kind of keep, you know, like um, some aspect of that character, like throughout the the rest of, of you know, I guess what we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of the Marvel movies. So my bias is just, yeah, I'm, I, I have, I think I love Marvel so much that that like watching these movies, it's like I can't help but just pick apart all the things I hate about it. And I, I, it just sours the whole thing for me. You hold them to a higher standard yeah. because you love it so yeah. much. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I should be. I should just be happy like everybody else and just love it. But no, it dude, just, I, I can't. I, I get it because like uh, one of my favorite authors of all time is this dude named Terry Pratchett. He wrote the Discworld series, and it's awesome and ridiculous and perfect like fantasy satire. And they recently have, uh, I don't know if it's released yet, but I know they were making a series based on one of the groups from his books, which is the City Watch. And it's like uh, the, the Watch, I think is what the show is called. And it looks like absolute garbage. It looks so bad. It's so far away from the source material that I love so much that I can't even bring myself to try watching that fucking show. Because <laughs> it like even just the trailers, I'm like, well, they fucked it up. They fucking ruined it. <laughs> Um, speaking of trailers, uh, did any of you guys watch the Mortal Kombat trailer? I am oddly stoked about it. I did not think I was going to be stoked about a Mortal Kombat movie. Me too. Tony, are you just like, uh, what are you doing, Tony? The fuck you worry about what I'm doing? I'm listening to your conversation, waiting for me to fucking say what I wanted to say. Right, what you did you want to we, say, Tony? We'll stop our whole that was conversation. Cute. That was cute. What do you want to say? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I did watch the Mortal Kombat trailer, and I still don't know what to expect. Like, we'll, we'll, like we'll, there's a couple characters, obviously, everyone decided. Liu Kang, Raiden, all the general fucking characters are there. But is this going to be Mortal Kombat where it's like, like how the last one was, it's all leading up to the tournament? Or is this like a post-tournament? Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what the fuck we're really going to get from this fucking this movie. I like think it's a trailer. Story. I think that it's going to be the tournament, and I think that when you're making a movie about a fighting video game, that your standards for plot are real low, are real low. Like, if you try to make too much plot, you end up like that stupid fucking Van Damme <laughs> Street Fighter movie. Yeah. Yeah, I get that, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like, I still want, like, more than just another fucking tournament. You know what I mean? We've been getting Mortal Kombat, uh, Mortal Kombat tournament. And then Mortal Kombat tournament. It's like, okay, like, is there something more to it? I mean, in Mortal Kombat 2, they didn't really do a tournament, right? It was, it was uh, Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn and, uh, reveals that he's, like, the big baddie. And then yeah. they go into the dark world and they just, like, fuck up all his goons until they get to fight um, Shao Kahn. And it wasn't a tournament at all. Yeah, I guess. So, shout yeah. out to the old Mortal Kombat movies, right? They get a lot of shit. I enjoyed the shit out of them as kids. <laughs> And I haven't watched that movie since I was a child, and I just told you what it was about, okay? It was, uh, you know, stuck in my mind a little, maybe a little too much, but... but uh, Yo, I was uh, waiting I, for that song to pop up. Oh, my God. That, that was my problem. So do, I watched do, the trailer, do. right? And I thought it was cool. The production value looked cool. The special effects looked amazing. Um, it was very gory. So I felt like, okay, they're kind of honoring like what Mortal Kombat was known for back in the day. Like when we were, when I was a kid, it was the fucking bloodiest video game that was around. So it was mm-hmm. like, I, I, I thought it was super cool that they were like, um, that, you know, they're going for that type of thing. Um, they got good actors, all that. They, <laughs> they, the, the best part of the old Mortal Kombat movies was that song. That Mortal Kombat. You know the so get every fucking kid on planet Earth doing karate kicks and attacking yeah, air and beating up all the pillows in the living room. Like, play that fucking song. I don't you know, know the why worst part of those old movies? What? Uh, Absolute worst part of those old movies. Go back and watch the very first one and watch Reptiles CGI in that fucking movie. <laughs> it's so bad. It looks so bad. <laughs> 
I mean, I thought it I looked pretty good. I knew it looked bad when I was a kid. I remember thinking, this is garbage. This is, oh my gosh. And then he just turns into bugs. Like mm-hmm. when he gets killed, he turns into a bunch of, like o- like Oogie Boogie in, in uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. He, he just like <laughs> fucking unravels and there's just a bunch of bugs in there. That's what Reptile is in Mortal Kombat, all right? Or like uh, in Constantine. Oh, yep. I never watched Constantine. You've never seen what? Constantine? It's a good it's movie. Surprisingly good. It's it's, it's a know, good movie. I have friends. Go watch it tonight. When I was in high school and it came out, people were telling me to watch it. I just never got around to it. He did finally watch American Psycho, though. I I told him to watch American Psycho. American Psycho is yeah. so fucking weird. I haven't seen that movie. I. So the whole internet loves American Psycho. It seems like it's a beloved movie. I watched it and I can't help but just hate it. I just did not like it at all. I sat through the whole thing. I thought it was dumb. It's just <laughs> not enjoyable. Glossy, sweaty face. The whole movie is like a thick layer of like gloss. That's terrible. That shit makes me want to throw up. They they gave me a good feeling of what it's like to live inside the mind of somebody who's losing their mind. So like that, they, they've achieved something. I just didn't like it. It wasn't a fun movie to sit and watch. I didn't like I didn't enjoy my time. And I'm not the only one. I, I, my wife was there. We watched it together. She also disliked it. I <laughs> <laughs> said, what the fuck is going on? What is this? What are we watching? That, movie, like, does, that movie doesn't even slightly seem like a Lisi movie, though. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. What about, uh, what about that Last of Us casting? What, uh, what, are, what, what do we think about that? I think the guy who they cast for Joel looks great. Who did Pedro they Pascal? For? Pedro Pascal from The Mandalorian, dude. Um, yeah. what? Who's the girl? I don't know the actress's name, I but I know know. that she played Lyanna Mormont in Game of Thrones. Yes, that Lyanna. Is Lyanna. Lyanna. Oh, yes, she's the little the little girl with the with the, the scowl of a grown man. The she killed the raptor. giant. The giant. Mm-hmm. She's named yeah. after my daughter. Yeah, they released yeah. a set photo of Pedro Pascal. Like, That's like, so. F- all, did y'all not catch that? <laughs> no one caught that. What now? Did you hear what Buddha said? Because she's named after my daughter. <laughs> like, <laughs> this shit is beast. I did not catch that. He threw that shit right in there. I was like, oh nah, this man's wild. That's awesome. <laughs> my daughter, the giant squid. <laughs> yeah, I'm oddly Sorry. excited. HBO does a great job with like their adaptations and like their their shows in general. I mean, Watchmen was one of the best shows that I've seen in the last like five years. Watchmen. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, the Watchmen TV show. If that's anything to go off of in terms of the production value of of an an adaptation that HBO will produce, I have no worries that The Last of Us will be good. And it's right up the alley of HBO. There's gonna be it's gonna be dark. There's gonna be deaths. They're gonna mm-hmm. kill people off in a gory fashion. They get to permanently kill characters and uh, break everybody's hearts. There's gonna be a couple dicks. HBO loves to show dicks. I don't yep. know what's their obsession with that. I don't know whose dick they're gonna show, but there's gonna be some dicks. All right. <laughs> it's gonna be good. All right. It's gonna be a good show. You know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've seen Watchmen at all. I think Pedro Pascal is a is a good pick for Joel. There's certain parts of the internet that are really upset that it's not a white guy. They're like. They're like, oh, Joe was white in The Last of Us. Like, uh, Pedro Pascal is like Latino or whatever. And I don't know. That's, I don't even I know mean, where he's from. Dude, Spain or La- something like that? La- Last of Us started. Last of Us started outside of Austin, Texas. Like that. That movie is literally set outside of Austin, Texas. Chance. The okay. chances are that a guy named Joel is a white dude in in Austin. Fucking low. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just people want. That's just people want the same stereotype. Fucking. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get in that realm of bullshit from people, but you know, you I'm think it's just a backlash of like, um, there, like there's been a lot of um, diversity in movies over like the last like I don't know five six years that, um, and I, I think like in some respects it's very positive because like people of color get to see themselves in more positions that are like cool and like you know like growing up the 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 only like uh hispanic like character that i could even think of that was the any any good in in like a movie was the uh 
um, Edward James Olmos, I think. He, he was a teacher. And he, he taught to some kids calculus. Like, uh, that, that movie was cool. <laughs> Beyond that, like, we're just gangbanger, like, one, two, three, four, and five in every single movie. And so it's just like, all right. Um, and so it's just cool to see, like, over the years, like, um, you got, like, again, we got, a, we got a black Captain America. You got, um, you know, you're going to have a, a some Hispanic or Latino, um, you know, character in The Last of Us, you know. Uh, even the Watchmen, they had uh, the the lead in that character is a black woman in the, in the in the Watchmen TV show that just came out. So it's just like a lot of a lot of things like that. I think I think the, that type of stuff is cool. Um, on another hand, uh, a bunch of people that are used to seeing only white people in those positions, they feel like they're taking away, like they're losing some power or something like that. So I think there's like a backlash. Yeah, that's the racist people. We've come a long way from Short Circuit to Johnny Five. Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! <laughs> Dude, the 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 biggest fucking plot twist regarding that guy is I don't know. Me and Doughboy have been. We, I don't know what was happening. We were just joking about. The we were guy talking about the- this like two months ago on PlayStation. <laughs> we look up the guy, and it was a white guy in brown face. Dude, I thought this guy was just straight up. New York, like a like a Punjab guy or something, and and it is just straight up a white guy and and brown face playing playing the 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 character from Short Circuit. I, I was completely shocked by that. I, I never knew that. My whole life growing up, I I enjoyed those movies. I thought, yeah, this is just you know a, some New York City shit, you know. And no, it's a white guy in brown face. I was uh, I was quite surprised. It by must that, have you know? been such a slap in the face once, like, because I saw a thing where even the Indian com- community was convinced he was Indian. And oh they were like, I wanna, no way! I want to break barriers like this guy, and then they're like, "Wait, that guy's white." And yeah, it was, <laughs> that's so funny. He even convinced like Indian people that he was Indian. Like he did it very, very well. So I like it's respectful, but I guess like. After a while, it becomes more of an insult. It's like Al Pacino being a, a Cuban refugee, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. the worst Spanish accent of all fucking time. In Scotland. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody I've ever met sounds like that other than Cuban people that want to sound like Scarface. Exactly. That are just doing the Scarface interpretation. They're the only people that sound like Scarface, okay? Nobody <laughs> else sounds like fucking Scarface. No Cuban person I've ever met in my entire life ever has the accent that Al Pacino had in that movie. It's atrocious. So bad. And they fucking browned him up. That was straight Al Pacino brown face. He went to the tanning bay a lot. You know, he had a, you know, he wanted to get that tan skin going on for that role. Okay. Okay. So the worst, the worst portrayal of another race by another race in all of film though. Steven Seagal. Has has to be Highlander. Sean Connery. Sean Connery in that movie. He's an Egyptian that's that move that like he started off as an Egyptian, and then he was a Spaniard. They call him the Spaniard, I think, in that entire fucking movie. Yeah, and the entire time, the entire time he's still talking with the Scottish accent. Even when he's yeah. like, <laughs> he married a Japanese lady. He, right? Didn't he say he was married to a Japanese woman in that movie? I believe so. <laughs> I forgot. Was it? He got a Spanish name. I think that's why they call him the Spaniard. Ramirez. Ramirez. His name's Ramirez. And he's originally Egyptian, and he's got a Scottish accent because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> that's like uh, they always uh, cast. Um... <laughs> Sorry, they always cast uh, Scarlett Johansson for everything to play an Asian woman. They ca- they casted uh, Scarlett Johansson. What movie twice, was that? For a Ghost in a Shell, and then she played mm. some. It was another movie where the lady was supposed to be half Asian. And they just cast Scarlett Johansson for some reason. <laughs> and so she's around a bunch of Asian people and she's like half Asian or something like that. But they were telling, they were saying that they just always, it's a running g- gag now on Twitter. Anytime, like, it's like uh, <laughs> this Indian movie, Scarlett Johansson featuring <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Y'all remember that rumor that was popping around the internet that uh, they were considering uh what's her name the woman with the big ass mouth julie roberts to play harriet tubman or something no <laughs> what's going on with that that, that was a <laughs> joke that, i think it falls in the same line of that joke of them just <laughs> casting way out of the the character's uh, looks that should be beast 
Julia Roberts no, as Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman's supposed to be on the $20 bill. I'm going to be so hype when that happens, bro. I'm going to get me some Tubman's. I don't really Tubman. see the hype no, behind that's that. It. It's changing, bro. I'm getting... What's, Yo, how many times is it gonna take you to do what I need you to do for me? <laughs> Where's the hype behind that though? That's beautiful. That? Like, what's the hype behind it? I don't. I mean, I get it because a, a black person being on a on a bill, a, a black woman, a black woman at that. But I'm saying I don't know. I mean, I mean you, it's, they seem to be putting in, like important figures throughout history on our money, right? There's all white people, but there's a number of important people from different uh, cultures, races, walks of life, and they're just trying to get some more representation. So I think it's cool. So mm-hmm. why don't they just do a whole rep- instead of just one? Why don't they just do a whole fucking a whole thing like got the dollar bill, the twenty, the ten, the fives, just fucking we, start we chopping it up. Entire, yeah, the entire recast TikTok. the whole fucking Dude. Benjamin Yo, Franklin can it, only stay as the hundred dollar bill though. Benjamin got to stay there. Up. That mountain that has all the faces on it. Oh wow! Blow that shit up, and we'll get some all new characters on there too. They gotta put Mr. <laughs> T on that mountain with all the gold chains. Fucking yeah, you know, Mr. T. <laughs> that's your first choice to go on the new Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I'm fucking got all the Rich chains, Rich. dog. All the chains. <laughs> like uh, um, uh, what the fuck? Michael Scott says, uh, name a great white person. And I'll name a black person that's better. And the guy, I don't remember that they, they had like a first back and forth. And then the guys are like, Jesus Christ. And then Michael Scott's like, Apollo Creed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fucking Tony's Michael Scott moment. It's fucking Mr. T on my Rushmore. Yeah, man. <laughs> Random fucking guy. Put him out there. But he, yo, he started a trend. To be fair, Apollo Creed would beat the shit out of Jesus in a boxing match. No, no question. Oh, that. Oh, man. Not when... Jesus could take a lot of punishment. Not man. if he gets are reasonable. We, are, we based, like a... are we basing this based on on the South Park boxing matches with him and Satan? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna hit that. He's gonna hit that resurrect on him. I don't know Ooh. if he got enough rounds. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, Jesus is gonna come Park back though. By Satan for like a hundred rounds until Satan punched himself out. I think Jesus lands a jab and just takes the Satan out. Doesn't <laughs> Satan throw the fight because he's betted against himself or something like that? <laughs> I, might, I might be combining fucking uh, the the Simpsons or I think I think uh, uh, Homer fights uh, Mike Tyson in a boxing match. And Homer's oh, he's yeah. so stupid, he's got a thick skull. Like, right? That's the joke. He just takes all of Mike Tyson's punches until Mike Tyson can't punch anymore. Then he and makes that one swing. He just defeats him. What's up, Tony? Then he took that one swing and boop. boop. Yeah, Mike Tyson was too tired. Well, I don't know. But what other um shows are they doing other than The Last of Us? They're doing that Uncharted movie. That should be good. Yeah, it's, uh... I it's Tom Holland playing uh play Nathan Drake and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I it's like Tom Holland. Nathan Tom Drake. Holland. It's a Tom super Holland. young Nathan Drake, yeah. right? Yeah. Who's so Tom Holland again? Gonna go for his like beginning. They're probably gonna start at like the origin. That's... Hopefully, they add some of that Mexico stuff that was in the game, even though it was a little bit boring as a tutorial. Who's Tom Holland again? Like I I, I can picture man. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, I don't know about him being Drake. No, I don't, know. I don't know about that. Who would you cast? Who would be your pick for uh, Nathan Drake? Because I put some thought into this, and I I've got a choice. I haven't really. Make, give me your choices, and I'll pick from your choices. I think this is, gonna, this is the second time I'm going to reference him on this podcast. I think John Krasinski would make a good Nathan Drake. <laughs> hey, John, this is a fucking Mateo's fucking <laughs> Everybody, John Krasinski in every fucking role. Yeah, this podcast is, is uh, sponsored by John Krasinski. <laughs> John? That'll be oh lit. Oh my god, no. <laughs> Dude, come on. He bro. just saw his no. face. Fucking <laughs> actor. Do you see do you see a quiet place? He's no. got some action chops now too. He played a uh, fucking uh what's his name? That that CIA dude. Uh, oh, um Jack Reacher. Right? No, Jack, Jack Reacher. No, is it Jack Reacher? I don't think it's Jack Reacher. It's the other guy. It's the uh Harrison Ford has played him and Ben Affleck has played him and 
Nah, he's a good actor, bro. Completely. Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. So I'm, I'm just completely off. I don't know. Could what you mean? imagine? I know, I know Jack, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. You see, I got the Jack. He did get the Jack. <laughs> nah, yeah, he, that show's good, by the way. I don't know if y'all ever watched it. That's I have true. not. I've heard good things about it, though. That show's good. But yeah, I, I think John, I think that Krasinski's got like some action chops now. He's got like that sense of humor and that wit. I think, I think he could pull it off. Yeah. I, I actually, I haven't heard this one, but I, I do think that's a good, a good pick for, for Nathan Drake. I know for a while people were talking about, uh, what is it? Oh my God. I might be botching his name. The guy from Firefly. It was Nathan a Nathan Fillion. Fillion? Mm. Nathan Fillion would be the absolute perfect one. Yeah. 15 years ago. That's a, the internet has chosen Nathan Fillion as as a as Drake. Yeah, he did a he did a test a test thing one time. There's like a, a short on the internet somewhere of him like playing like this five minute video of Nathan Drake. Really? Uh, and he and he's good. He's just like he's 15 years too late at this point. Like they should have made this movie fucking a while ago. I guess that would have technically been before Uncharted really took off when it was the first Uncharted game. <laughs> well, I mean, if they do like a like seven or to do like an older version of it like right like movie number two yeah throw him in there as the old guy fucking some weird some like back and forth shit though, yeah. dude. yo on a side note i saw uh this guy tyrese doing an audition for django one of the worst things i've ever seen in my life tyrese Terrible. tyrese the singer yeah, yeah. for django the and fast, chance the fast and furious guy it was terrible. I mean, another singer won, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Like Jimmy Fox was, like, Jimmy Fox was a clear, like, better drink to me. I, yeah. yeah, it's it's always interesting when when you um, when you find out like uh, like the actors who audition for certain roles, and the, you know, there's like certain roles that you just couldn't imagine another actor doing it, but and then you know. They're like, oh man, this guy just, you know, he just like nailed it or whatever. Then you go and you look at the other auditions for the role and they all seem just horrible. But like the idea of it would be interesting. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I find it really interesting. Just like, like you said, like imagine watching Django, but it's Tyrese. And it's like, your good reaction is that it's horrible, right? But it's like, who knows? Maybe Quentin Tarantino could get the most out of Tyrese and it would still be good, you know? Well, Chris Farley was supposed to play Shrek initially. <laughs> no way. Yep. Oh man. That role was that Chris role Farley. was written for Chris Farley. Can you imagine how rapidly, like just completely different like that that take on the character would have been? <laughs> Shout out to Chris Farley. I was just watching Beverly Hills Ninja out of boredom trying to fall asleep the other night on Netflix. Still a funny movie, all right? I was watching very it. entertaining as a comedian. Shout out. Shout out to Chris Farley. Poor guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I am excited about, um, Netflix, I think, just bought the rights to a, a Mega Man movie. What really? the fuck? And I, I, I'm, I, I'm a huge fucking Mega Man fan. And so I, I would be pretty hyped to, to see um, Mega Man as a film, especially if they do it good. I wonder um, how, how would you do that well? Well, so I'm... I, <laughs> I would... Um, I would borrow from one of my favorite bands, uh, the, the Proto Men. They made a they made a a, a, a concept album. Though he's going for his second uh, pee break, um, they made an album about Mega Man, and they've like basically redone the story like in a very like dark, like a very dark tone. So I would definitely go for the very dark tone, where like Doctor Wily is like the fucking dystopian ruler of like this place and. Dr. Light has created a, a robot to kind of fight back against the man and bring power back to the people, right? You could uh-huh. make this super fucking cyberpunk setting where it's like all like Dr. Wiley has all these like, you know, he's just a fucking ultra gajillionaire, right? So he's got all his robots are in control of all the production of this entire place, right? Um, uh-huh. And yeah, you can make it super dark where like, you know, you got people like, the, you know, everybody's like, you know, it ain't all kid friendly. You know what I mean? Like, like, um, you know, everybody's killing each other and shit like that. It, it, like something akin to like, a, like an, uh, you know, like remove the comedy from like the Fifth Element or something like that. Like a setting similar to that. Like, I, I think it could be like super interesting. That'd be interesting. Just a super, super dark Mega Man. So not, 
So not like a live action Mega Man Legends. <laughs> no, although that'd be cool. I love Mega Man Legends. Dude, Mega Man Legends was the shit, dude. <laughs> At the probably my favorite Mega Man's to be honest. Like, and I love the just like the original six on the Nintendo, um, nine and ten. That that I I love I love the Mega Man X games first, and I love the Nintendo one. They're all fucking good. I play the shit out of all of them. The and X Legend- game, the X games were the first ones that I that I started with. Uh, like. I tried playing the old Mega Man's and those games are fucking hard, dude. Those old Mega yeah. Man games are yeah, really they're difficult. Hard. They're definitely <laughs> difficult. Yeah, very. Um, um, that's interesting. I didn't know that uh, the Netflix was thinking about doing that. They yeah, canceled I mean, the Legend of Zelda for some reason. The 2015 joint that they've been working on that got canceled. Thank God, that's probably gonna be fucking terrible. It was uh, supposedly a live action <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I was, I, bro, as soon I as they mentioned it, I, I was like, they're going to fucking shit all over that game, bro. Like, I have, <laughs> like, I had bad visions of all that shit. <laughs> like, I, I feel like if you, like, like we just saw Netflix did a really good job, in my opinion, with The Witcher. I feel like if they could pull off a Witcher series, they could probably pull off a, a Zelda series. Yeah, I think there's some cool Zelda. shit you could do with a Zelda series. I think you could have, like, I think you could go real weird with it. And have like four different storylines going at once, and just have it be four different versions of the Link and Zelda story, like happening in each one. Or you do it like American Horror Story, and each season is just boom, new. We're gonna recast. We're not gonna recast everyone, but we're just gonna have them play like different versions of the same character, different versions of the same like role kind of thing. Uh, and get weird, get weird with it. Do like a fucking horror season with a uh, Majora's Mask material because that yes. game is creepy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be super dope. It would be like an interesting way to get um all the again games. my favorite kind of comic book are these one shots or some they get some writer he comes in writes something super interesting with some characters we like and then it's over and mm-hmm. like yeah that'd be super dope is every single season is like just all completely different you know so okay. I like Black Mirror all the episodes are all unique it's like you get you're not married to a plot or anything like that you just now I like the- to be- I would like to be married. We could pull off, you know? I don't want a, a different shit all the time. I want to be married to a good storyline, like, like a lot, like Zelda or 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 um, Mega Man. Like those have great storylines. I don't want like no each episode's like a new. Nah, fuck that. Like that's so, what I'm. How many TV shows though have like many seasons and they're just good? Like they stay good the whole time. It's rare. The Office. Mm, the last season of the you're, you're forgetting terrible. about some seasons in there for you sure. You said the last yeah. season's trash? The last season is absolute garbage. There's a few redeeming <laughs> episodes in there, but that last season is hot doo doo. I would, I would right say Park Recreation, although even that last season slipped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Vice Principal. Yeah, because it's like they came back for one more season, weird kind of thing. Vice Principal is really I like good. I guess those shows I wouldn't count as like um, shows that have like substantial plot in any sense. Like every episode is pretty unique, and then they just sort of you know they keep some threads going, some character development and things like that. I'm thinking more like you know like The Sopranos or The Wire or like or like Game of Thrones, like you know shows that like there's a story that they're trying to tell, and they tell it over the course of many seasons. And it just seems very rare that you get shows like that that are just good from beginning to end. So uh, it just seems for me it's a weakness of TV that, that they, they have a hard time telling a good story that spans multiple seasons. You end up with fucking Lost or Game of Thrones, which the first few seasons are phenomenal, and then the last few seasons are shit, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. You're not wrong. The, the wire, the wire is one of the rare shows where you got like a concise story that takes yeah. over, takes over the course of many seasons, and it's just good. I don't know. That's fair. Did you guys um see any of the uh, BlizzCon shit for like Overwatch Two and all that? Uh, I read some of like the the stuff they were releasing. Uh, it looks like they're basically going to sell us the old games again but remastered this time <laughs> i'm not buying no remastered shit the Di- diablo 2 Bo- bucho's favorite game of all time i think it's like number number one on his list 
<laughs> you kind of remastered that one. <laughs> I, I bought the remastered World of Warcraft, uh, not World of Warcraft, the Warcraft game remastered. I heard that one was shit. It was not that great. And I mean, the game is fun. It's all right, but it's not it, how long it took and all the controversy around it. Yeah, it ended uh, up not being that great. I do have uh, Overwatch 2, I think, right? They're bringing new characters. I think they should get rid of certain characters. I think they need to get rid of Echo. They need to get rid of that one dude that's a fucking tank with the rock. I keep forgetting his fucking name. He picks up the rock and he uses it as a projectile. He also has like a shield that he can throw. Sigma. Yeah, Sigma. Get rid of him. Why? Do you, why? Like, Orisa's better than using him. That man is trash. <laughs> like that man is trash as a fucking I've tank. I've seen some people use them. Really I've gotten I've gotten wrecked by that Sigma dude before. Mm-hmm. Man's trash. Get rid of him. Get rid of fucking Echo. Pointless characters. They're honestly like fillers in my eyes. And get rid of fucking um Ash. Actually, no. Keep Ash. I like Bob. Ash is only good for Bob. If you knew, if Ash, you, Ash right now is like one of the best like so damage. Wait, like, I don't no, get it. You I, want them to take stuff away just to add new characters? No, like, just replace them, recast them. Like we don't. I, like Ash is only good because of Bob. You know, Tony's got a point though because you know who I think they could recast Ash with? John Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll be ultimate. He'll, he'll be ultimate. <laughs> what would be his ultimate? What would be his ultimate? He just he'd look at the camera and give that office look and they'd do, you know, ungodly amounts of damage. <laughs> yeah, right, Poot? Uh, yeah, I'm making the, the awkward look at the camera thing that John Krasinski <laughs> does in the office, right? Oh. Where like something weird happens and then he just finds the camera and just makes the stare. He's just like he's just like, here's some shit, and then he's just like nah, but <laughs> I, ungodly I, damage. Like, Insta death for all the, the enemy players, right? New maps too. <laughs> They're bringing out new maps. Um, they're already changing the look of all the characters. Like Mercy got a new look change. The monkey got a new look change. Are they giving treats to her dunk back? They, they need to bring them the asses hair. back. I I looked at like the 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 preview of like the new looks, and it looks like they just added a bunch of knee pads onto like all the characters, and just added like some extra bumps on their armor. They just need to bring the girl back with her dunk. That's it. I don't know why they hating. Like that girl can't have a dunk. Man, lost their shit over that. Yeah, like, bro. They showed in the previews, and she had one ass. And then when the game was, in the next previews that came out, they flattened her ass, and the fucking internet went crazy. They were so pissed off at Blizzard. They're like, "Where did Tracer's butt go?" All this, and then they lost it again when they found out that Tracer was gay. They they got so pissed off about that, like. I don't know what's wrong with there were just, the there were stories or rumors or jokes going around saying Diva and Tracer had a thing. I mean, like, there's there's really like that's, that's funny, people bro. just people just care a lot about like some really stupid shit. I'm sure uh, on like some in type form that actually went down. <laughs> yeah, there's probably some like stupid little like obscure subreddit that like people just get really pissed about some stupid nonsense all the time because they need to get their thumbs out of their ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I am know, excited. We're talking about NYC bike. Is that, is that like... <laughs> <laughs> fucking cagers. <laughs> fucking cagers. Can't cancel us. No, but, uh, fucking, um, I'm, I'm excited about Overwatch 2. I mean, the first game is awesome. I played the living shit out of it. Um, it's, yeah. Are, um, are they doing it? Are they doing a, an engine redesign? Like, is it going to be like ground up new game? It's not just like they're retexturing shit and being like, here, give us $60 for this new fucking. Like 2K? Like NBA 2K? <laughs> The thing right they're saying they're doing a new engine and it looks like a retexture and all of that but then they also said you don't even need to buy overwatch 2 so like when overwatch 2 comes out you'll be able to play with all the like players that are still playing on overwatch 1 so it's like if they do too much of an engine overhaul then the games can't be compatible you know what i mean yeah so i don't know what what they're really gonna go for here they better not fuck it up they made. They better. They also better bring back uh, Symmetra's fucking seven turrets. Fuck this fucking <laughs> three turret bush. I used to fucking run game with seven turrets. It took a while to load them all up, but bitch, when you had seven, it was a wrap for these months. But Overwatch is the best game, I think, when it comes to balancing every fucking character. Like they do a really good job at at that. 
I think it's, it's real tough, especially when you have a roster that big. It's it's got to be real goddamn tough to balance. Hell yeah! And then they're gonna add more characters. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I think Blizzard's done an amazing job of Overwatch. They're gonna I, make. I feel like we talk about Overwatch every fucking episode, but again, I mean, they're gonna. It's gonna get even more complicated to for them to keep it balanced. So it's gonna be amazing if they are able to pull it off because the, the one of the things they showed is there's gonna be skill trees for the characters. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be like diablo style or like moba game style where it's like as you kill people in the game like you get points that you can fucking pop into different skills mid game or something which i hate that shit if they turn it into a moba that sounds awful to me doughboy you're fucked bro if they do that that to bum me out doughboy's fuck me yeah I'm, no because you can't play good at mercy you're gonna try to use her you're not gonna be able to do shit right you only have one character you're good at and it's barely a lucio <laughs> Um, no, it's an attack. The other night, he he was shitting all over me. Every time we play, he shits on me. Oh, you can only use attackers. You can't. You're not good with Reinhardt. You're not good with Mercy. Meanwhile, I fucking whoop ass with Mercy. I don't even use her gun, which her gun is OP. But I whoop ass with Mercy. Like I heal six different people at the same time. But no one dies when I'm Mercy, unless you're a well, dick and you run off. Thank you for waking back up, Tony. I'm coming back onto the podcast. No, it's I'm good to have you oh, here. What are you talking about, bro? You've taken six bathroom breaks here. Are you are you kidding me right now? <laughs> good to see you again. I'm here just Close looking up, up research on what you guys are saying because I'm not talking. Mm. <laughs> so in other news. Ooh. Slightly other shout out, Mateo's jokingly. I fucking can't stand Diablo too. I fucking hate it. You love but, it. I do respect Diablo. I enjoyed the shit out of Diablo 3. And in fact, Diablo 1 is like my first PC game. I don't know why. Just you saying how much I love Diablo 2. I just like fucking remembered like when I was a kid, right? My cousin, they got a brand new computer. Well, I say brand new. The first fucking computer the family got. It was literally the first computer. (laughs) I walked over there. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck's a computer? Like, shit, this keyboard. I've never interacted with a computer like that. So I go to this house and they had some games on on the computer. They had Virtual Fighter, horrible. Wow. It was like fucking. It was a couple polygons punching each other. It was terrible, terrible. And they had Diablo on the computer, and I, I used to play the shit out of Diablo. And I feel like it was some kind of like trial <laughs> version or something because I don't think it was like a whole game. But I used to go over there and play the shit out of this. Game. I'm sorry. Um, I thought you was gonna Diablo. say. I thought you was gonna say Minesweeper. <laughs> Fucking like all those computer <laughs> games when you first Minesweeper is hard, bro. I don't think I've ever won a game in Minesweeper. That's so easy. It, one, wow. one of the first video game scares of my life was playing Diablo One. You know exactly the bit too. <laughs> the first time you're the, when you re- meet the butcher dude, him just screaming out fresh meat <laughs> and oh. then eating the shit out of you. Pause. <laughs> Right. Well, I thank God I never played those games. That game dude. was very dark, like very black. I remember being very scared as a kid. First off, the, the like I grew up super Catholic, and so Diablo literally means devil. That fucking creeped the shit out of me. And uh, dude, I remember playing Streets of Rage three. I, there's a level where there's like a bunch of like demon or devil characters. Like as a kid, that shit scared me so much. I just like Paul, I stopped playing. I, I've never gotten past that in, in I, that game. Bro. I think my scares was like either Silent Hill and Resident Evil, bro. That whole yeah, walking Evil. down those darkly fucking hallways and shit. I'm here thinking to myself like I would never be this person. I wouldn't walk down here with like Silent Hill. Yeah, bro, scary shit. Silent yeah. Hill, spooky. Yeah. I mean, dude, I was such a scared fucking kid, man. Like, like the only reason that I like, oh my god! I remember like I, when I got Resident Evil One, I couldn't even get past like certain parts of that game because I was too fucking scared. The only reason I ever really like played those games a lot, and I love Resident Evil One, Two, Three, like I played them a lot, um, was just like I had friends around that would beat these games like i remember my brother's friend chancellor came to sleep over my house for a couple weeks and i just remember him just you know playing resident evil 2 and i just watched him just demolish the whole game and i would just like watch him play and then like by watching him play i like learned like like how to beat the game and shit and i remember thinking that shit was so cool i just like watched him play the game and then after that it just kind of took some of the the fear out of the game and and i I was able to actually play um resident evil 2 and shit 
That to me makes but the game better though. I would watch these horror movies and the shit would Oh my god. Dude, I was a fuck I used to I was so fucking scared of shit as a kid. Like I had like so much anxiety about shit. Like from a super young age. I remember yo, my grandmother's snores were ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The loudest fucking sound you could ever fucking imagine. And I remember like I would wake up. I'm I'm an early bird, so I'm always the first motherfucker to wake up in the morning. So I would wake up. And it'll be like six something, still kind of dark. And all I hear is like a fucking lion growling. In my head. <laughs> and I would be terrified. I, I would not get out of my sheets. I would stay completely still for hours until my brothers woke up. And I would try to like kick, because I'm sleeping in a bed with my brothers, right? And I'm trying to like kick Jeff awake or Brian awake. And I'm like, yo, like, like help me get out. I want to go play Nintendo, but there's a lion in the room right now. Like, and I, I, I was so fucking horrified. And then we had this fucking closet in my room growing up. There was like red on the wall, like a red paint or like something like that. And I, my cousins, and I, I don't know, I think my brother was still sort of God. Like there was this story that I don't know, y'all grew up with Bloody Mary and, and, and these kind of oh like. my God. La Llorona. La Llorona. I don't, I don't know who told me this, but basically. My cousins locked my brother and one of my cousins in this closet, and they just started saying blood, like just kept saying Bloody Mary a lot of times. And DK blood started dripping out of the walls. Th- that's their claim, right? But there was fucking blood, like red drip on this wall my whole life growing up in this goddamn closet. And it just horrified me. I was afraid of that closet. When that closet was open, I was mid. I was like just one thing away, one moment away from having a fucking panic attack. <laughs> if I watch a scary movie, it's all I could think about. Like it was, it was horrible. I was scared of so much shit growing up. Like anything, it would just, it would like get in my brain, and I would just obsess about it. I, it, it was terrible. So. Yeah. So fuck scary movies, fuck scary games, fuck all that shit. Okay. So like, got- wasn't it wasn't it hard for you to play the remake too of Resident Evil Two? The remake with the big tyrant jumping around. Dude, the game all super good, super comfortable. I was like, man, I'm returning. Like to this. this is fucking dope. And then what, what the fuck was that for? This fucking Mr. X in a top hat. When he came out, it ruined the game. Yo. I was running for my life. I finally got to like a safe place. I just saved the game and I turned it off for like three weeks. And Dory kept saying, yo, continue. The game is good. Nah. I was like, man, fuck. I eventually went back and beat it, but that shit scared the fuck out of me so much. So, I, I don't know. So I got I'd too be, much things. I'd be, I'd be super down for watching, for watching people play some, uh, some horror games and us like streaming that shit so we can all watch that because that sounds awesome. Nah. Uh, when me and in state, I don't know. Man. I would like to I play think. the seven because I never played seven, and like, yeah, so I never... can get into this next one. I, that would yep. be cool. And I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think I didn't play it because it, they went all in on the horror, and I'm just like, I, I'm not playing that shit. <laughs> I'm not trying to have a bunch of anxiety dreams for a couple of weeks. Like, on a on a different note, though, the Borderlands adaptation, since we were talking about adaptations. I don't think we can not discuss some of the casting in that one because it's weird, right? Like, there's some weird shit that they've done in that one. Uh, I think Jack Black's fucking hilarious. I think casting his claptrap Ooh. is going to be interesting. I love Jack Black. I like uh, I like Kevin. I don't like Kevin for the character, though. Casting Kevin as Roland is such a weird choice. I like Kevin it's in it. Terrible. Is it because he's short? They should have gotten his homeboy, The Rock. The Rock should have played fucking Roland. Like that's yeah. the, the the casting that makes sense. <laughs> Kevin, I yeah, think Kevin's gonna sure. pull it off. I don't know. Roland is like the straight character in the in the whole thing too. Like he's the one that they bounce jokes off of. Like he's the. I don't know. It's 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 he's weird. He's the guy that jokes don't end well on because he's too fucking serious. That's so why it's just think- like a complete departure. I mean, I don't know. The Borderland characters too. It's not like ultra important anyways. So it, yeah. it, the world is so goofy that they could change the personalities of all the characters. And it won't matter too much as long as if it's like in the same vein, like similar or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a weird choice. Like, um, I don't know. When I saw that he was cast as Roland, I'm just like, isn't Roland supposed to be like the like the buff fucking Marine dude? Like, and they got little ass Kevin Hart to play the role. I'm That's like, why I think it'll be hilarious. funny, bro. I, I think it'll be hilarious to watch him like play that part. 
I mean, he could uh, ruin it, but. They haven't announced any other castings yet, right? Besides. Uh... No, Jamie Lee Curtis. Who is, who is she playing? Uh, she's going to be playing Tannis. That's right. That one's good. I actually like that one. I like and that choice. Kate Blanchett is going to be Lilith. The Siren. Okay. Kate, who the fuck is Kate Blanchett? Kate Blanchett, most famous for Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh God. Yeah. yeah. She's a uh, Galadriel, right? I don't remember her name, but I remember she's her. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, I, I think she's a good choice. I think she's a good choice for Lilith. I'm curious for what they'll do for Mordecai. Yeah. Uh, what and, about the uh, crazy one? Think you put Tiny Tina in there? Because there's some controversy around her. If they do Tiny Tina, they've got to get Ashley Birch to come in and just play Tiny I Tina. So. Yeah, hmm. I love I love Ashley Birch and I love Tiny Tina. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people hate Tiny Tina because they really. Cause, yeah, because yeah, she kind of sounds like the, the way that she talks kind of sounds like um, cultural appropriation, like a stereotype of. But, but, how but she, she but she, but she's also a like Ashley Birch herself is a minority. Like she is a person mm. of color. Yeah. 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 I'm like, saying, whoop, I'm, I like, like I said, I like Tiny Tina. I think it's funny. And, mm-hmm. and, and Tiny Tina is almost an extension of Ashley Birch. Like, if you watch like some of the old YouTube show, like, hey, hey, that's what you're playing. She makes the same voice, talks in some of the same similar ways that Tiny Tina does. And I think I her brother is a writer. On, on, yeah, was he, that her brother, like a writer for like, Yes, he was. Or, or Borderlands? Uh, or... Yeah, he was he was a lead writer for Borderlands too. So I don't know. I, no, I... Big, yeah, big big shout out. That that's who they should cast. Ashley Birch, right there. She is the absolute best. And she's little too. Like you know, it, it'd be I don't know. She could be a cool tiny Tina. It'll be mm-hmm. super fucking dope. Um, one adaptation I'm super fucking hyped about right now. I incredibly fucking hyped, and I hope you guys all go out. Do your homework. Read some comic books. Amazon is releasing a TV show, an animated TV show on my favorite comic book series, Invincible. Comes out next month. I'm I'm super fucking stoked for it. Um, I, I don't know if y'all ever heard of Invincible. Go mm-hmm. look this shit up. No. It's, it's um the same writer of The Walking Dead. Okay. He wrote comic book is basically like his version of superman so to speak so like he wanted to rewrite a story similar to superman but just like with his own twist hmm. and it's way better than superman in my opinion um That's awesome. yeah it's a phenomenal fucking comic book I, i'm looking forward to anything else robert kirkman writes because the walking dead is also one of my favorite comic books so the guy i don't know so far i don't know what other series he's written but the two that i've read he's two for two and dude, check that out. Invincible is so fucking dark and gory, and and I saw the trailer for it, and it looked like they're going all in on it. Like people are getting ripped in half, lasers is murdering the entire cities. Like they're going all in on it. Like I don't know the animators they got. It looks great. Amazon's going all in on on uh, trying to faithfully like um, adapt this. So I'm I'm super excited for it. That's that awesome. sounds badass. Yeah, uh, the yeah, series, the series, the series I'm going to recommend that y'all watch that's ongoing right now is Snowpiercer, because the movie is amazing and the series is pretty goddamn good. Where am I watching this at? Uh, uh it's on uh, Netflix, and I think the new episodes are showing on Hulu right now. It's called Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Yeah. Also, watch the movie first if you haven't watched the movie yet. Where, where's the movie at? Oh, that is a good question. I thought I saw <laughs> yeah, it on this. This this sounds good. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, it uh man, it was all the you though? too. Cause, are cause you gonna like, do this? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean you're doing started, a real good job with WandaVision. So I just wanna know, are yeah, you no, really gonna do it? I started it? going into the Marvel universe. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing these things. I got an iPad, so I'm gonna start watching movies at work and stuff like that. That'll be good. Oh, so you're gonna go to work and not work. You're gonna just be watching movies. Yeah, on my breaks and stuff like that. I have a little bit of a break and yeah, breaky break. <laughs> I have a music rec- recommendation. There's this alternative band, um, uh, Nothing Nowhere. They just released an album called Trauma Factory, and it's really good. It's like a mix of like hip hop and alternative music and some like really heavy metal. Sometimes sounds really good. And it what works. Is music? 
I don't know. I guess I don't know. What is alternative music? I would I would put them in they have guitar instruments in their band, they have drums, but then like it becomes like a production as well cuz you have some music that in there that sounds like trap music and the trap music turns into like really death metal. It sounds so good. It's huh. like a blend. It's like a blend of so many like different sounds. It sounds really really good. Uh, the one song I like a lot is um Upside Down. And then he has another one, um, Fake Friend. Those two are really good. And they're absolutely going nowhere. That's their name. No, it's called it's called Nothing Nowhere. Nothing it's Nowhere. Oh, okay. And and yeah, Nothing Nowhere. I like I like Tony's little spin. That it, these extra words absolutely that Tony adds on that things we hear. Some some salt, babe. And they're, <laughs> they're going absolutely nowhere. That's what he said. They're going absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Oh, no one said anything about going anywhere. <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'll definitely check out the recommendations for Snowpiercer and Invincible. That seems kind of, and I'm gonna listen to Absolutely Nowhere. Definitely in my car today. I feel like Tony, you might have even read some of Invincible <laughs> in my house. I might have I like, just waiting. I got, I got those big ass comics behind me. Like I'm pretty sure, like one of those times you came to my crib, like you were you read a little bit of it. You still got my comics, right? Because I can't I still f- have okay. Because I can't find them. I was I was nervous. I'm like that's something I just want to give to my son. Be like here, read some comics, and then I'll go to Pucho's house and steal more comics, and then I'll be like here, this is Pucho's comics, but they're yours now because. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't need them shit. Take, he's going to take the Star Wars book. Oh, I, I'm definitely going to steal that shit. <laughs> I'm like, yo, let me, uh, let me borrow this real quick. Teach my son all those Star Wars characters, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, Liana's great, though. She She's a fantastic child. She'll fight you for it, guaranteed. I'm going to be the battle of the kids. She got, little, she got little hands, too. The other day she put them up. I don't even remember why. She put them both her little dukes up like she was going to fight somebody. I was like, all right, that's my girl. She already is ready to throw punches, all right? <laughs> don't take no shit. Gator, take no shit. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Oh, what's that? The fucking the something uh, guys, right? It's uh, the other guys. The other guys. Yeah. Oh, the man. Guys. Gator, don't take no shit. <laughs> Gator, don't take no shit. No shit. Shout out Will Ferrell, dude. Yeah. This guy's fucking great, funny. Great man. actor, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. All that whole I, dude, I love all the Will Ferrell movies. Dude. I watch all Talladega the Nights any day of the fucking week, dude. You ain't first. You never watch that one. Never what? Talladega. Yes, Talladega you have. Nights. So good, yeah. man. You have watched never. it though. No, I haven't. Oh man, you're terrible. You gotta watch Saturday Night. It's probably one of his best. My favorite one. Step Step Brothers is my favorite. That's your list. Let's see. Let's yeah, see if David gets through one item on this list before yeah. facts <laughs> before next week. Let's see. I would. I would put money on no. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, he even uh, says yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah! Like the fuck out of here. This is nah, my, my favorite Will Ferrell is probably uh, Stranger Than Fiction. I just rewatched it the other day. Mm. Still great movie. Step Brothers is my favorite. Yeah, I like that movie too. That brothers and Talladega like Nights are right there, hand in hand. Well, I mean, I guess what that's it for the show, right? For this episode, and we can yeah. keep going. Let's do another two hours, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. I mean, I more things, right? We didn't talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie. We didn't talk about Max. I need to watch that. I've never seen that when it looked so bad. Yeah, it looks so bad. Terrible. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider? And Resident Evil, two surprisingly successful films. Oh, they re- that one's coming out too. Resident Evil's coming out. The movie well. or the they show? They made it. it. They're already done, wrapped up production. The show or the movie? I think it's a movie. It's a remake of the first game. Yeah, y'all also forgot about Monster Hunter too. By the way, we what? did forget about Monster Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we got we got more. This there's a to be continued on this the adaptation facts. conversation yeah. because Super Mario Brothers is one of the best adaptations of all time. I loved it as a child. It also solved the mystery of what Mario's last name is because obviously it's Mario. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie, dude. That movie's fucking good. Anybody who says otherwise, they could go to fucking hell. Yeah, that shit Damn. is awesome. 
I, everybody should want to do the dinosaur, just like the the the, the, the song in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the mushrooms protect you, you know. They they Luigi was all about following the mushrooms. Luigi is my favorite character as a kid because I'm always player two. And the fact that they kind of made him the main protagonist of the movie, I thought it was fucking fire. John so, Leguizamo is an amazing actor, dude. I like him. Not a big actor. I know because because of the best. Because the of the best. best. <laughs> movie That's where it like comes from. I'll give you my address. I'll send it to you. Come and fight me. All right. I, I'll tell you right now. If you defend the pest, you could also burn it up. Damn. <laughs> it's a time. Oh my god. But so now, he's really good in uh, John Wick, though. Who? Oh, yeah, you know, he played, yeah, as the mechanic guy or whatever. He's, he's actually done a lot of good roles. Like, because of the pest, it soured me on him as an actor. <laughs> and he's actually pulled off a lot of good roles after that. He, I liked him in that movie, Chef. He was good in John Chef Wick. Chef is good, yeah. And what is the Empire, awesome. Empire something? Is Empire something? He was like a drug dealer. He had the G chain. I think it's just Empire. Yeah, that was yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tony, you, you can do your outro now. Oh, I can I do that? Can I do that? <laughs> but no, once again, thank you to all the listeners for you know coming back, rewatching some of these episodes, and continuously supporting us and likes and subscribes. But uh, yeah, from the One Up Podcast, we want to thank you again, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I am Kabyle here with my co-host Doughboy Pucho. And Mateo, hope you guys have a great time and enjoy this latest episode. Peace.